Kiss getting you ready for this crucial contest in the Big 12 North number 21 Nebraska and number 24 Missouri talked about the weather it's been raining all day they thought it might move through so far that hasn't happened a chilly raw night down there in the field is Aaron Andrews with Husker coach Bo Pelini thanks Chris and coach you said I want it to rain tonight you got it how does this help you well you know you just manage it you execute your football both teams are playing on the same field. It's mind over matter in situations like this, and it's whoever executes between the white lines is going to win the football game. Several of your players said Missouri's fast start the past two years has hurt them. What's key in preventing that early? Well, it's a 60-minute game. Whatever happens early happens, but it's about executing over a 60-minute four-quarter game, and uh, our football team's ready to play. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Aaron. All right, Chris. Aaron, thanks. Second year for Pelini at Nebraska. Nine years of experience as an NFL assistant. LSU defensive coordinator before he got here. Like Bo, Pinkle is an Ohio native. His ninth season in the eight previous years. Bowls five of them. Five of the last six years, in fact, here at Missouri. How would his team do minus the stars? Daniel, Kaufman, Macklin. So far, 4-0. Nebraska won the toss, deferred to the second half. So, not economical, booted away. He's good at getting kicks into the end zone. This one in the middle of the end zone and Jasper Simmons will leave it there. So Blaine Gabbard as Jesse said earlier originally committed to Nebraska. He's a Missouri native and no picks so far. It'll happen sooner or later but ball handling handling the conditions tonight tough Jesse. It's huge tonight. You really need to secure the snap in the shotgun under center belly the ball in the running game as well. Derek Washington second team all Big 12 a year ago thousand yard rusher. Is to the right of Gabbard. It's Jones, the tight end, in motion. Gabbard fires over the middle, complete. Pick up about eight yards, and that is Denario Alexander, his top receiver and one of the impact players tonight. Yeah, and Derek Washington had 17 rushing touchdowns a year ago. He was all conference then, but he's gotten off to a slow start. They got to get him going. Well, this guy here was injured, and before his injury, was ahead of Jeremy Macklin, a first rounder. That says a lot. Sean Witherspoon, the Butkus finalist from a year ago, will be seen when the Huskers have the football. Missouri plays quickly. They're up to the line on second and three. Devin Moore. They fake it to him. Gabbard dancing around and gets the corner and the big guy showing some elusiveness. He's known for straight line speed not for shiftiness but a nice run. <laughs> yeah we don't want to get carried away on the shiftiness now. <laughs> I said he wasn't known for shiftiness. It did look like Barry Sanders bouncing around back there but he does have some moves on him and I think Jesse the fact you're going to see an aggressive fast Nebraska defense to the ball backside might be an opportunity. Watch this tempo here comes Missouri playing very fast. That may not be a factor, but the play clock is out as part of the Jumbotron scoreboard when they had the power outage earlier. They'll keep it on the field, but Missouri rarely uses the full time anyway. This is another catch by Alexander, but he cuts it back and only a short game. It's interesting, you know, we talked to offensive coordinator David Yost, and he said offensively they're actually playing faster than they were a year ago. And, and no, we can't see the play clock on this end of the field. They want to snap the ball with 15 seconds left to go. That gives you an idea of their mindset of how confident they are that they can put pressure on Nebraska. Alexander got four with his second catch. They hand it off to Washington. Side steps a tackler and dimes forward. It'll be third and short. The running game is going to be key tonight for Missouri. They've struggled up to this point so far, but again, offensive coordinator Todd Yos told us they're going to explode off the ball and really try to move the line of scrimmage against Nebraska. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on the splits. You know, this Missouri offensive line has really tightened up from what they had done last year. They said they might split out a little wider again tonight. We'll see how that impacts the D line. We'll see if Gabbard's throwing on third and two. In this offense, you can kind of go either way in this down and distance. And they give it to Washington right side and he cuts in one of those running lanes created by the wide splits and gets a first down across midfield. A lot of motion a lot of movement you're going to see the left side of the line they'll pull and they'll come around watch how they come in they give you that direction. And Washington follows in behind them and I like the play calling in the bad weather running plays and short passes. Empty backfield as Washington moves to the slot on first down. Gabbard fires to the right. Too high. Off the hands of the receiver. And it's Jared Perry. Senior. 
you get the feeling this will be one of those games when quarterbacks are throwing downfield. You got to aim for numbers and body catches. Anything by the face mask or above the head in this wet weather, those go through those gloves pretty easy. Gabbard hasn't had a lot of fast starts this year. Very keyed up guy. It's often taken him a little bit of time to get into the rhythm, but pretty impressive opening possession for the sophomore so far. They fake the handoff. Gabbard drifting way back. Gets pressured. That's Big Sue chasing him, and he's got to throw it away. You can see the quickness of the 300 pounder, and now flag downfield in the Nebraska secondary. Boy, oh boy, you see the speed. Isn't that amazing for a guy that's 300 pounds plus to get off the ball as fast as he does? He's all over the field. Do it all defensive tackles. You don't see many defensive tackles leading their team in tackles after four games. How about pass broken up? He <laughs> bats balls down. Leads them in there almost. You don't have the microphone. That's one of the casualties here tonight. It's like pass interference on the offense. Pass interference. On the offense, number 81, 15 yard penalty, second down. Now they fixed it. My apologies, the mic is working. So a, a penalty on the Tigers will move all the way back inside their 35 yard line. Yeah, you know what? A broken play. And again, Mr. Sue on the defensive line, 93, as we've talked about here, there are very few players that you've seen in college football that can dominate an opponent like he can. And he has his work cut out for him tonight. We've talked about those big splits Missouri's using up front. He's got a long way to run to get to the football, but he certainly is athletic enough to get that done. And they got a long way to go. Second and 25 at the backfield. Again, Washington was in the slot. Now he motions into the backfield. Gabbert pumps, throws deep down the sidelines and overthrown. Perry, well covered there by Mukamara. Try Mukamara. Yeah, that's it. Get, 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 get <laughs> that's a good, good name tonight. Absolutely. Hey, dude, Nebraska's got some good ones. <laughs> they, we'll get them in there tonight. You know what? We, we were coming over in a car trying to avoid the rain up to the booth, and, and offensive coordinator Yost, we saw him. We said, hey, you better do some pump and goes. <laughs> yeah, better loosen them up. He was listening to you. <laughs> Third and 25. Gabbert pressured. Again, Sue was in there quickly, and he just throws it away. So the crucial offensive pass interference ruins the drive and Missouri will punt. If Nebraska can put pressure on the quarterback tonight with only four men rushing, it will be a difficult night for Missouri. Defensive coordinator Carl Polina told us that last year they didn't really appreciate how good they were up front on the D line, but they now know they can get pressure with four guys and leave a lot of guys back in coverage. Jay Carey, the fourth, a very good punter. They use the shield punt, they call it, kind of the rugby punt. He'll boot it on the run. Boots it left footed. A low kick, tough conditions to field punts tonight. And they give it a wide berth there. Niles Ball wants no part of it, and they down it at the 20. 46 yards, no return. So here comes the Nebraska offense. And Zach Lee, the junior, son of former NFL quarterback Bob Lee. The guy who played 12 years in the league. And Zach Lee against three Sun Belt Conference opponents this year has been lights out. But he really struggled a few weeks ago on the road at Virginia Tech. At home, 76% of his passes completed. So we'll see what he can do on the road and in the rain. We got here via City College of San Francisco where Jeremiah Masoli, the Oregon quarterback, was also in the roster at the same time. Roy Hulu Jr. in kind of the pistol formation. He's got the ball. And Nebraska's fine tailback finds some room on the left side. Joel Harrison brought him down, but a nice game. It's going to be a different look offense from Nebraska tonight. They're a lot more balanced. They'll try to establish the run in a lot more conventional way. It's a very deliberate draw, kind of a draw deal there, where the linemen come out and they find their backs. Now, you see that Halu will not wait on a defender to come get him, right? When he sees an opening, he's gone. He ran right through that Hokie defense for 169 yards, averaging 6.4 carries this season. Yeah. And this time they're all over him, a loss. Jasper Simmons, the safety, came flying up. You're seeing exactly at the line of scrimmage. They're going to be doing a lot of audibling tonight, changing the direction of the run plays with this noise. That's something exactly has to be ready to deal with. <laughs> Simmons wasn't going to let him run away that time, was he? He <laughs> no wouldn't got him. You know, when you talk about coming from the right side of your screen, they're getting up in the hole now. 
That right that lane that's the running lane for the back. You're going to meet him there so don't wait on him to get to you. In that case this began lining up about two o'clock this afternoon in the rain to get those front row seats. Trying to make it loud on the Huskers on second and 13 Lee over the middle in traffic tried to force the ball in there to Mike McNeil the tight end one of the top receivers in this team but well covered by the lineman uh, Jarrell Harrison there. Yeah we talked about Nebraska's defense coming into this game right not much mention about the series defense not at all right they're, they're looking to prove themselves as well they may not have been necessarily tested yet by a great offense Nevada certainly does good things on their side of the ball but this is a chance for Missouri's D to make a big statement yeah, they really underachieved last year with a lot of experienced guys back 10 starters back less who didn't play well a lot of new faces this year. Third and 13. Lee steps up, starts scampering, gets near the line of scrimmage, and fires incomplete on the sidelines. Niles Paul was the intended receiver, and Missouri's defense holds. Like Nebraska's defense on third and long, Missouri's got it done with a little crossing stun in the middle of the field and only four rushing, allowing a lot into coverage. Alex Henry, fine kicker and punter. And Carl Geddes is deep for the Tigers. Huskers have to run a man out late. Only had 10 on the field. It's a fake. Nope, it's just a snap that he had to make a run to field, and he boots it off the side of his foot and out of bounds. So Henry went to his right. I thought he was going to take off running. There's a team that was number two in net punting in the country coming into today. Not a great start tonight. <laughs> no, it was just an off target snap. <laughs> and a shank pump. Missouri will have the ball near midfield. Missouri trying to beat Nebraska for a third straight year. Haven't done that since 1969. The 22 yard punt by Henry sets up Missouri at the 48 for their second possession. Empty backfield. Throw to the far side. Catch made by Alexander and he knifes ahead. So the senior's been busy. Third catch already. Here's a look at the old punt. Here's the tackle box. These two lines you see drawn right there. When the punter gets outside of that, he's no longer protected. If he gets tackled or hit, it is not a penalty. I think he was caught off guard. That wasn't one of those planned rollouts. Well, the snap was, though. Yeah. I mean, the snap took him over there yeah. outside the tackle box. That's what I mean. Gabber fires low. It's caught for a short game. And Alexander came in with 29 catches, already four tonight. Coming off the monster game against Nevada. Nine catches in that game, a 74 yard touchdown that put him ahead. Quick snap, Washington running right, trying to get the corner. Does, lowers his head and picks up about seven. You're seeing Missouri right now use what they call super tempo. It's even faster than normal. They line up in the same formation each and every play and try to get an extra beat on the D. Well, you're seeing Super Washington running the football, too, who last year had 139 yards and two touchdowns against Nebraska. So he's been there, done that. He's gotten after him pretty good and starting off strong tonight. And they go to the far hash away from the Huskers bench. They cannot make any defensive substitutions. Devin Moore is in the game. Give Washington a rest. Amber fires. Delivers a strike for a first down. You can see the arm strength. And he's having no trouble throwing the wet football so far. He's going to have to be careful because they're going to play what's called a lot of match zone coverages on defense where they're going to try to read those routes and squeeze on the football. You, you see all of that, but I want you to also look at the pocket. Look at that pocket. That's is that nice? nice? Yeah. Huh? Catch out to Devin Moore, who went back and collected it. A flag is down as he gets inside the 20. Holding on the offense, number 66, 10 yard penalty, first down. And they got Austin Webbles, the left guard, and a sophomore. 
Missouri's first drive undone by a pass interference penalty and they'll move back here 10 yards. And last year's win against Nebraska 52 17 shellacking Missouri did everything right early. They only had one penalty the entire game. They already have two tonight. Totally controlled Nebraska's offense. Ran for 201 yards. It was the worst home loss in 54 years for the Huskers a year ago in Lincoln. So first and 20 after the penalty. Gabbard loses the handle. That's what we said that the smallest little thing take your eye off the ball for a second Jesse and the wet ball comes into play. You really cannot take it for granted. You have to be so fundamentally sound in all the little things you got to eyeball the football in as you catch it. It's the little things that make the difference in these bad weather games. So a promising Missouri drive moving backwards now. Second and 24 as they try to keep that football dry over there. It's going to be an uphill battle tonight. <laughs> Another penalty Outside. rushing in. It's Barry Turner. He thought he was induced. Missouri hasn't practiced in the rain. They have an indoor facility. And, you know, they would go inside when there was lightning, but they really haven't had many wet weather practice days. It doesn't look like it's affected them here tonight. I mean, they've come out throwing the ball well and, and executing their offense. So it's back to second and 19. Gabbert, little freeze option look. Searching for a receiver and running out of time. Sue tracks him down, balls loose, and the Huskers have it. And Gabbert down on the field. Gabbert appears to be injured, and he'll limp to the sidelines after the fumble. Jared Crick recovered it. Sue once again shows his quickness. The one thing that the offensive lineman of Missouri said that they respected about Mr. Sue so much was that he played throughout the play. He never stops. He's got an engine that is always pursuing the quarterback. And Damakong Sue told his defensive backs this week, Give us just a little more time with coverage, and we're going to get after this quarterback. There was unbelievable coverage downfield on that play, and that allowed the relentless Mr. Sue oh, to get that's after That's a thing Gabbard. of beauty, that play, how he just kept working yeah. and working and forces the fumble. His buddy Crick, the other defensive tackle, who gets overshadowed, but he's also very good. He makes the recovery, and Lee and the Huskers take over at the 46 and hand it to Halu. And he tries the left side for a short game. Craig, you were saying earlier you're watching Hulu warm up. He reminds you of another very famous running back that's played here in Nebraska. Hey, you know what? Mike Rozier was a great player in the way that they both run behind their pads. And they've got that burst. And right before contact's made, Rozier had this special thing about him. He would accelerate into the fire or strike zone. He would hit the guy before they hit him. Give the blow instead of take it. Yeah. Rozier came from Jersey. Roy comes from California, said he hated Nebraska when he first went there on his recruiting visit. It was the least likely place. But his mom convinced him, changed his mind. And there's a completion on the sidelines and a flag. Kerensky Gilliland caught the ball. Now we'll check the marker. Jasper Simmons shoved him out. And signaling holding. Holding on the offense, number 24. 10 yard penalty, second down. As Miles Paul, the receiver, blocking downfield, wipes out the first down game. I like the thought from offensive coordinator Sean Watson trying to get his speed players the football early. Kerensky Gilliland, probably the fastest guy on this Nebraska offense, but those penalties, they'll kill you and move you back. Good both teams so far. And you see Jimmy Costello, the sophomore, has gotten into some of these blowouts from Mizzou in mop up duty in case Gabbert can't continue. Tigers show pressure and bring it up the middle as Lee fires and complete. Gillelan, the sophomore from Texas, makes the catch. Near first down yarder to the 49 of Mizzou. Yeah, you know what? Missouri decides to come. They put the pressure on the inside. Nice job picking up route down the field. Well, Missouri is going to try to pressure Zach Lee tonight. They haven't had a lot of pressure all year long, but right there, great job with the protection, allowing their quarterback to look downfield and deliver the strike. Gillelan is a big play receiver. He's had a 35-plus completion in each game. That one, a modest game, but he's got a first down. 
Malou motions back to the backfield. An option look. Lee keeps it and gets hammered inside the 45. Hardy Ricks, the safety, came up and popped him. Smile from Lee there. Yeah. That's an option there. Is it? Let's, let's do that more often, Coach. <laughs> Smooth. He took a shot right to the chest. <laughs> On the, on the inside, I don't know if he's really smiling. <laughs> he's, he's faking it good. <laughs> the two-back look is the talented true freshman from Plano, Texas. Rex Burkhead is to the right of Lee. Lee escapes, now circles back, goes behind the line of scrimmage and throws incomplete. He had crossed the line, I thought, and came back. Came back, and linemen were not down the field. Very smart. Nice job staying disciplined there. It's strange he didn't keep running. He would have gotten very near first down yardage. Well, Zach Lee really struggled against Virginia Tech a few weeks back, and he said before that game he was really jacked up. It looks like tonight, so far, he's playing a little bit more within himself, playing within the system. Nebraska, 47% team on third down so far this season. That's pretty good. We need five yards here. Option look. This is Burkhead, the freshman. And Rex Burkhead breaks into the secondary and has a first down at the 30. Pretty good receiver. Talented guy from your neck of the woods, Craig. Plano. Yep, absolutely. Watch this guy a long time. Look at the decision. First of all, how about Zach Lee get him in that call? Moved him over so they could run the option. Uh, how about way. the shot Zach Lee took from Brian Coulter there? He paid the price, held the football till the very last possible moment, allowing his running back to get outside. Yeah, Chris, you know, watch this guy for a long time. He's a very gifted, multifaceted player. I think he's got a big future here at Nebraska. Burkhead got 14 yards on that one. They fake it to him. Lee fires behind his receiver, Gilliland, and a flag is down. Sloppy weather. Already a lot of sloppy play. Personal foul. Legal shot block on the offense. 74. 15-yard penalty. First down. That's the guard, Ricky Henry. Both teams really hurting themselves with the flag so far. And, and Lee, some inaccurate throws in the wet weather. They're trying to move him out of the pocket. He's had a lot of throws on the run so far. You know, again, accuracy so critical. Allowing your receivers catchable passes. I always felt like in a rainy game like this, the ball started out okay, but then the, the more you played, the wetter your body got. It just seemed to get heavier. Just, it just got worse. Both, your body or the ball? Both. Everything. They were all together. <laughs> Shoes, cleats, gloves. First and 25. Niles Paul in motion. We'll give it to Hello. And he doesn't get much. ABC's Saturday Night Football features a Big Ten battle. Undefeated Iowa. Still with a point to prove, but ranked up at number 12 against the Michigan Wolverines. 8 o'clock Eastern time presented by Southwest Airlines. How do you I, see that one? Iowa's a tricky team for me to figure out because, you know, they beat Northern Iowa by a point in the first week. They beat Arkansas State by three points last week. They look good against Penn State, though. It's Ricky Stanzi. You know what? You see his numbers and what he's done. Can he match Tate Forcier, the true freshman? That'll be a good matchup. Iowa is a heck of a football team. It's got to come down to the final play, right? Doesn't it go for CA every week? <laughs> and second and 22. Lee, pressure, ball loose. There's a pile at midfield. It looks like Lee fell on the ball. That's Kirk. Came around. The linebacker on the blitz knocked it free. Number 65, Mike Smith, the left tackle. You know what? These guys, they've got to get back. You've got to really set back. A former defensive end, he knows you've got to get back against speed. That was a fumble hand not coming forward. Alert play by Lee to fall in. That's what coaches love to see from their defensive ends. Not just try to make the tackle, but if you have an opportunity to swipe the ball away, take it away. What do you got in third and 29, coach? Not much. B for K. Tigers. Rush four, and Lee still doesn't have a lot of time. Fires short. Paul makes the catch, takes a hit at the 40. 
way short of a first down. Luke Lambert on the stop. They don't convert the first down, but a nice job by Zach Lee to take what's given to him to move the chains. Now they get a chance to punt and pin this team well, deep. You see what they did as a football team. They saw they had their defense that gets the turnover, and now the offense will at least pin them back a little bit, boys. So, oh, yeah, but you know what? That's helmet to helmet. That's where the don't runner lower your helmet, lowered Mr. his Paul. head. Absolutely. What are you doing? Don't do that. See if Henry can pin the Tigers deep. One of those nights from field position might be real important. Angles it toward the sideline, but didn't do his job. Lands in the end zone. So, late first quarter in a scoreless game, Missouri will take over at the 20. It's a trophy game. They play for the Victory Bell, the second oldest rivalry in the Big 12. Decades of dominance by Nebraska. So many heartbreaking losses from Missouri between 79 and 02. The flea kicker here in 97. Nebraska won it. But it's been Mizzou the last couple of years. And since the breakthrough win in 03, they've won the last three at home. Gabbard back in the game as they take over from the 20. And they hand it to Washington. Aaron. What was going on on the Missouri sidelines after Gabbert limped off the last series? Well, no confirmation from the Missouri training staff, but it looked like he was getting a, a shot of some sort. Then they brought him over to the bench and they uh, taped up his right ankle. And I just watched him CF after that, and, and he was limping a little bit too. Yeah, we're showing the replay, and you can see that right ankle getting under the, the backside of 300 pound Mr. Sue. It could not have felt good. Empty backfield on second and seven. Gabbard fired short. It's a screen and a loss. Big hit delivered. Gomes came up from the safety position. Now you could really see that that Nebraska defense schooled up very well, Jesse, and they saw the screen and beat the guards pulling out there to block. They sure did. It'll be interesting to watch Blaine Gabbard here the next couple plays to see if he's ginger at all on that right ankle. See if he's really able to plant and drive off that right leg. See if that injury is going to affect him. Alexander in motion on third and nine. Gabbard flushed, fires short. He sets his tailback to make a play, but Washington tackled short of the first down. And when you go up tempo, it's very tough to go three and out. Gary Pinkle knows that as Gabbard gingerly trots off. It doesn't look like he's full speed, does it, Craig? When you're watching him right here, we haven't really had a chance to see him drive the ball downfield to see, but ginger a bit. Yeah, absolutely. And with Mr. Sue pushing the offensive line back like he did there with only four rushers around him, you know, you got to block better up front and protect. Nebraska had the ball for 520 in that previous drive, and Missouri's defense is going to have to go right back on the field here. Final minute of the first quarter. Larry boots it away. Pretty good kick. And be careful. The ball landed near some Nebraska blockers. Did it touch one? Yes, Missouri football. So a special teams miscue by the Huskers. And Missouri will set up inside the 35. Matthew May, number 36. The ball caught him. If you're on punt return, you really got to do a good job being aware of where you are on the field, watching your punt returner and just getting away from the ball. You see the returner telling everyone to get away. Matthew May not paying attention. Costly turnover. But yeah, it got him in the foot. It has to be decisive by that punt returner. He has to be screaming and letting his teammate know, Peter, Peter, get out of there. Move out. How did Previous they, how did play they, is under further review. They'll, they'll check it, but they appeared to they hit May's heel. He didn't really argue about it. How, how did it become Peter? I, and it's universal. I always wonder, why didn't they call it Mike? Sam, George, Henry, Henry. I don't know. They came up with Peter. Peter Stock. What about Menelik or Kerensky? <laughs> Please, no. We'll take a break as they review it. <laughs> Replay confirms the call on the field. The ball did hit the heel of Matthew May. Andrew Gatchgar was a starting linebacker down on special teams, made his second fumble recovery of the season. There you can see it right. And Gatchgar alertly jumps on it. So Missouri in the final minute of the first quarter sets up at the Husker 32. Gabbert gives to Washington. And Washington hammers into the secondary. A flag is down in the holding zone, and that's the signal. Boy, a lot of flags on both teams holding. tonight. On the offense, number 71, 10 yard penalty, first down. We've watched so far how fast 
this defensive line from Nebraska can run. And when Missouri has these opportunities to gash them, you can't have these penalties and you're backwards. Yeah, of course, you've got Palmgren, 71, rotating in there with Austin Webbles. And they do that so they both stay fresh and don't make mistakes like that. But when you're playing against a really strong, powerful defensive line, sometimes being out yeah, man they, gets you. The better the D line, the more likely you are to hold them, right? Yeah. Glad to find that quickness. First and 20. Never looks and fires left. It's incomplete. Try to get it low to West Camp, and he took a blow. You know, these penalties early in drives really set you up for failure. And we, we've seen both teams tonight so far really struggle to move the chains because of a lot of costly penalties early. I don't think Gary's enjoying the wet weather tonight. He's over there, your arms folded, kind of scrunched down. <laughs> it's a good night to be in the booth. <laughs> Did you hear that, Aaron? <laughs> Five receivers for Gabbard. He fires high, and Perry couldn't come up with it. Yeah, I hear that. I also heard how we were driving over. Oh, yay, the rain will stop. Game time. <laughs> I was just going by the radar. Feeling Sorry good. about that. Feeling good. It's a good hair night. Boy, it's important to deliver that ball. As you said, Jesse, on the numbers, it's tough to make those hands catches. You really got to aim for the numbers. You got to put make these things body catches. Anything outside the, the perimeter is going to be tough. Four on third and 20. They still get near him and he's dropped. That was Jared Crick, the other talented defensive tackle for the Huskers. His second sack of the season. This guy's underrated because Sue's so good. Uh, you know what? When you're trying to block one on one over here on the left side, you're going to see there's the match right there. And you got to get back, got to stay square and flush. Well, he just, that's just a miss. You know what? He messed up on his assignment, he didn't he? He sure did. But Jared Crick used to play defensive end. You see some of that speed right there working inside, able to chase Gabbard down. Gabbert may be losing some ability with the ankle problem. So Missouri, the end of the first quarter, scoreless. End of the first quarter here in a rainy, soggy Columbia. You got two choices in the end zone. You can sit in the grass here, a little soggy, you can risk sliding down, or go over here in those nice, hard, white rocks where it's maybe drier but can't be as comfortable. It reminds me of the beach in the south of Santorini called Perivolo. Looks Rocky to me, Beach. Looks to me like the jetty and you're fishing, yeah. waiting on the tide to come I'll in. I'll take the beach over the white rocks and the hill. Would you be a grass guy or sit on the rocks guy? Uh, I'm grassing it. I, but I'd have to put a little foot in the dirt to give me a little pocket. Missouri squandering the opportunity after that muff punt that took over with the Husker 32. That holding penalty and the sack, they move him backwards and now punt Nebraska down to the 11. And as Gabbard continues to have that ankle worked on. Applebee's weekend menu. Big, big weekend in the SEC. Alabama and Oxford, Mississippi in the afternoon, and then the Gators and the Tigers with all the intrigue about Mr. Tebow in prime time. Two good ones in the Big Ten as well. You talked to Coach Nutt today. How's he doing at Ole Miss? He loves this kind of situation. Told me how good Alabama is for about five minutes, and then I said, wait a minute, Houston, you love to play the underdog. You love when nobody's giving you a chance. He says, I do. It's my kind of game. <laughs> but the Tide are the favorites for a reason in that one, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. So Nebraska at the 11, trying to be careful. Lee keeps it, nowhere to go. Undefeated, there are three of them in the Big 12. Missouri, Kansas, and Texas, of course. Six teams ranked from this conference. How about, how about Bielema? Guys just under the radar doing their thing. How about these two? We'll see South Florida and Cincinnati a week from tonight. Tampa. Huge, huge matchup. Great passing offense in Cincinnati. Guess one of the best pass defenses at USF. Second and ten. Here comes the crowd noise for Lee. Controls the snap, which was wide, fires low and incomplete. Boy, the Missouri DBs are squatting on those short routes. We're going to find that you're going to see because the receivers can't catch the ball, Jesse. They're playing in that little five, eight yard box. But right now, Nebraska is going to have to at least take one shot and just back these DBs yes. off. You have to show them that you have the threat of throwing it downfield. If you don't, like we just saw they're going to be squatting all over these short routes. We saw Steck, Dave Steckle, the defensive coordinator. 
Les Steckel's brother. It all starts, though, up on that offensive line. They've got to protect these quarterbacks. Here's where the game is. Tigers bring pressure up the middle. They hit Lee, who gets it away, but overthrows his receiver, Chris Brooks. And he got popped. Nebraska had an opportunity here. This is what's called cover zero defensively. There's no safeties deep. But because of the pressure, Craig, he was not able to make an accurate throw. You know, Will Ebner comes in 32 and 9. They just smoke Lee in the backfield. But you almost have zero time to sit back there when you got zero coverage. In, in cover zero. <laughs> pressure on Henry now, punting from his end zone. High snap. He's in trouble. Throws the ball out of the end zone for a safety. The little things are tough on a rainy night. And it's fitting that a safety produces the first points of the night. Nebraska punter Alex Henry is having a very rough night. He shanked a punt earlier, but he blasted one through the end zone. He has a tall time just fielding this thing, trips over his own feet. It just, just tosses it out the of the end zone. The ball, yeah. but, but you know what? I think the snap being a little high, that he was so concerned about catching it with the chest to back him up, that he backed up a little bit to give himself more room to get body behind the ball. And because of that, his timing was thrown off. True freshman P.J. Mangieri is the long snapper. He's had a tough go. Nebraska was a really good special <laughs> team coming there, into by the, the way? day. And, and, you know, <laughs> you'll hear about that guaranteed <laughs> from your head coach. And, and, and Bo Pelini can get after his guys. Oh, he but was, He didn't carry as a true freshman. Oh, but it, it's a team that's done well on special teams heading into this game, and that's really kind of been what's been killing them so far early. And a muff punt and then the bad snap and the safety. And now it's a free kick. Tee it up at the 20. They won't use the punt. Now, when you look at the total yards in this game, 88 between two of them. Both these offenses, nobody can do anything. Field position becomes so critical. Each team, three crucial penalties. It's been Nebraska's special teams miscues. Now, a pretty good boot. Simmons straight up the field, going to tiptoes across the 30, and that's where they'll stop him. All right, Craig, what do you think on this drive if you're Missouri offensively? How about a double team every play on Damakong Su? What do you think? Well, then that opens up. They've Jared been doing that, haven't they? they open up here. <laughs> Allen and three guys. Barry Turner. I mean, th this defensive line really has been able to go with just four, and so it's given Nebraska's defensive coordinator. Carl Polini, a lot of freedom and flexibility. He's not having to dial it up. Blaine Gabbert still looks a little bit gimpy running back on the field. Yeah, since Sue fell on an ankle, he hasn't been very efficient, has he, Gabbert? He just rushed four, almost intercepted. Stepping in front was Amukamara, had it in his hands, couldn't hold it. That would have been the first career pick. Well, Blaine Gabbert's Gabbard. receivers have to help him out. It looks here like Jared Perry kind of quits on this throw. He kind of settles down instead of just running through the football. You know what, in Jared Perry, they said he was dependable in our meetings. You know, that's not dependable. You stop on a quarterback like that, and he's lucky he didn't get a pick six there. He's only 175 pounds. He's had to learn to be tough in traffic. This is more. Picks up about three. It'll be third and seven. Backfield. Shuffling those footballs in, trying to drive them up, right? Five receivers on 37. There's pressure off the corner. A completion, but not getting first down yardage is more out of the backfield. The third down play in the last drive, we saw Missouri defensive coordinator Dave Steckel dial up cover zero. Carl Polini does that right here, getting the pressure on Gabbard. He's still limping. You know what? And he's uh, he's not getting any help up front, though. You know, he can't sit back there in rhythm like he did that first series or so. Mr. Sue and his defensive line mates are really putting pressure up there. Here's Harry, who was seventh in the nation coming into the game. 
third of the conference. Miles Paul at his own 30 yard line. Zoo goes three and out after the free kick following the safety. And the left footer sends it down to Paul who loses the ball. A scramble at the 25. Nebraska retains possession. Almost another special teams gap by the Huskers. You know what? I, I'm one of these guys, Jesse. I don't know how you feel about this, but when you got those rugby style punters on punt return, I would be a guy that would think about putting three receivers back to stop the short punt from up top. When you have something like this, Missouri's got to capitalize on that. Very lucky, Nebraska. Nebraska able to retain possession, only points so far on a safety after a miscue on the punt snap. It's our pleasure to visit the University of Missouri Children's Hospital yesterday where the staff does a tremendous job of making these young patients feel as comfortable as possible, meant for the number of them. It's Marlowe there, the fractured elbow. Our best wishes to Braden, who suffered from leukemia, but the good news is it's in remission. And our salute to the entire staff did a wonderful job. It's very near the stadium. We met a lot of special, special young kids, didn't we, Craig? And special nurses and doctors and administrators, everybody working together, trying to get the best possible comfort to those families. Kids all over the central part of the state coming to Columbia. We have a medical need. Burkhead in the tailback on first down for the Huskers from the 25. They fake it to him. Lee fires complete. Oh, incomplete. He threw it behind Gilliland again, and he's really been having trouble with his accuracy on this rainy night. As we check back with Kevin for a 30 and 30. Chris, the Cardinals were one out away from evening their series with the Dodgers, but Matt Holliday could not catch this fly ball in the ninth inning. Game still alive. Four batters later, Mark Loretta ends it with a walk-off single off Ryan Franklin. L.A. wins 3-2. They lead the series 2-zip. Meanwhile, the Rockies tie their series with the Phillies 5-4 at the bank. Next Sports Center on ESPN2 at 10:30. Stay current with ESPN News. Kevin, thanks. You got my purple Rockies hat up here in the booth. Ooh, big hit delivered, and the ball is incomplete as Jasper Simmons hammered Burkhead. We talked about the speed of the secondary and how aggressive they are. They have no problems pinning their ears back, playing downhill, really punishing these skill players from Nebraska. Yeah, welcome to college football, Mr. Burkhead. Welcome to the Big 12. Simmons, 6'1", 205. That's a medicine ball if everyone's been thrown. Junior at a Hutchinson Junior College. Lee's missed his last four. Now faces a third and ten. Tigers rush just four. Lee steps up, dives, and takes a big hit. Well short of a first down. Sean Weatherspoon, their top tackler, delivered the hit. As we check back with the uh, special teams miscues, there was the bad snap. Then off the heel of May, Missouri couldn't do anything with that field position. And then the last punt, Henry collects the snap but throws it away. Dodged another bullet here, and now Henry's back on the field. And see if that freshman long snapper can deliver a more accurate pass. Gets it away. Good punt. Gettis driven back to his 15. Now tries to make something happen. Gets out back across the 30 as a Nebraska player is down on the field. We'll check his condition after we come back. 54 yard punt, 14 on the return. J.C. in Nebraska helped to the sidelines, injured his leg down covering that punt. I'll show you another look at it. Footing tricky in this wet field turf. You just hate to see this. It looks like he gets his right foot kind of stuck in the turf here. That knee looks like it buckles a little bit. Really unfortunate to see. So each team with just 47 yards offense in this first half. Mizzou taking over at the 31. Washington had an opening for a second, but it closed quickly, and he has body slammed to the ground by Big Mr. Sue. 
you can't expect any lineman to hold Sue that long. You know, if you're run game here, you better be up a little bit and watch how fast Sue comes off the blocker. Missouri averages 306 pounds up front on the offensive line, but that does not matter because Damakong Sue is so strong, just slams the opposing lineman. And he slammed the ball carrier down hard. Just freakishly strong guy. Gabbert down the sideline, takes a shot for Perry, it's broken up. Mukamara was there. Tried to get the ball to Perry a few times tonight unsuccessfully. You know, this offense has really struggled since Blaine Gabbert went down on that sack by Sue. And their last three possessions now, they've totaled minus eight yards. And first down's been abysmal for both offenses. They're trying high percentage passes on first down. They just tried there a run and they were tardy to the line. So first down's killing these offenses. Huskers rush four on third and ten, and the throw is complete, but just a very short gain, nowhere near first down yardage. Perry collected it, but Gomes is right on him. Nebraska is going to be content when Missouri gets in third and long to play those match zones defensively, just watch the route combinations happen in front of them, and pursue the football and make tackles short of the first down marker. Pretty easy to do that when you've got that big defensive line up there doing their job, right? Absolutely. Comes Jay Carey, the lefty punter, and <laughs> if Nebraska is smart, they'll just get away from it. Paul is out of there, and there's Burkhead, the true freshman, back to receive this punt. Knuckle balls down there. Burkhead's going to try to field it at the 16 and makes a fair catch. Now, big news in the Big 12. The problems for Des Bryant ruled ineligible and Oklahoma State's excellent wide receiver high hopes for this team which began the season in the top five Oklahoma State the next opponent for this Missouri team and you, you managed to talk to Deion Sanders today who's been implicated in, in, in some of the, the stuff involving you know basically Deion yes. Sanders position was that, that look this kid did nothing wrong he had dinner at my house the problem that he did was he said no I did not have dinner at my house to the NCAA he lied to them that's pretty stiff sanctions against a young man for making a, a, a decision to say no when asked a question so far they haven't implicated him in any other violation but they take lying to those investigators pretty seriously Paul with a short catch big hit delivered at the 24. You know, you wonder if lying to the NCAA should garner missing the rest of the season. And I certainly don't believe that, but of course the NCAA is going to investigate this. We'll find out if there were any rules broken in fact. I'd just like to know as a player, if I walked in as an 18, 19, 20-year-old, I'd want to know the rules sit down. Did they tell him that? Did he really understand the rules? And time bring though, Bryant. Off the Cowboys team. Hello. Tries to get the corner. He's cut down as a couple of flags fly. Alden Smith, the talented redshirt freshman defensive Holding end. On the offense, number 68. 10 yard penalty, second down. It's Keith Williams, the guard. Alden Smith, a big future for this Missouri defense. He says that he's not always in the right spot, but he's just a playmaker. Well, he says a lot of guys on defense try to tell him, hey, you're, you're not playing the defense right. You're not where you need to be. And all, what does he say, Craig? <laughs> I'm looking for TFLs, <laughs> tackles for losses. I make plays. I make plays. <laughs> got big potential. Still a lot to learn, like most Richard freshmen. The leading sacker on this team with three coming in. And now marching backwards after the holding penalty. Boy, I'll tell you, as if it's not tough enough against the opposing defenses. Tough enough with the weather. Both offenses just self-destructing the penalties. Tigers don't blitz. Back off. Lee delivers to the far sidelines, and a catch is made. Menelik Holt, the senior from San Diego, his 10th catch of the season. This is really nice by Zach Lee, both pre-snap and post-snap. He gets them into the right protection and then throws a very catchable ball with a lot of touch on it, Craig. I like the fact that Holt focused 
on the football at the very end with his hands. You saw his head stay on the ball. Good job of finishing it up. And we got a first down. Hey. Where are you lately? Hey. <laughs> Inaccurate snap collected and then fired high and off the hands of Gilliland. And now a flag comes down. There's an altercation in the secondary. One player from each time. After the play was over, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the defense from the 12. 15 yard penalty. Uh, it can't be from First your down. leader, your captain, Sean Weatherspoon, making a mental error. He came in and, and hit a guy in the head at the end for trying, a lineman for trying to block him, and Spoon is a lot smarter than that. Right now, for Nebraska, I, I'd like to see them run the football. They, they stress they want to be balanced, and they've been trying to throw early. You got a guy like Roy Halu Jr. in the backfield. Run the ball. Let's get this thing going. Get 11 net yards so far because of the, the sacks they've taken. Just four for 17, Jesse. Well, throw on first down. Again, this is catch by Paul. Nope, dropped it right there. That was an accurate throw. Rutman was on the coverage. Here's Sean Weatherspoon. You're going to see he's the furthest guy on the left coming into the screen. He's trailing it late. He's a captain. There's a play that tries to cut block him late. Mm. Oh, man. It's just like it just blasts him in the back. No right in front there. of he's the field. He's to be in the game still. Yeah. He did. Easy call for the field guy to make. But that's a great football player, though, Weatherspoon. And doesn't make very many mental mistakes like that. Pressure off the edge. They pick it up, and Lee fires complete. Just short of first down yardage is Paul at the 44. Again, Zach Lee is showing you that he is in tune with this game plan. Already on this drive a couple times, he's had to change the Mike linebacker call to make sure that his pocket is set and everyone gets protected. What you mean there, Jesse, is the blitz was coming from the right side. He helped his offensive lineman out, so they made sure they knew who they were identifying the block. Great job of recognition, recognizing the pressure. High formation in third and one. Burkhead is the tailback. Looks like a rugby match. They give it to the freshman. And he dives for a first down. Almost broke it. Legate, the fullback with a good lead block. Rex Burkhead is a guy that this coaching staff really, really likes. He's a change of pace guy to Hilo Jr. How about Ricky Henry, 74? <laughs> Did he get in the hole, Fowler? Now you see Burkhead just tripped over him, I think. He, yeah. was, he was headed for the end zone, perhaps. He had a little opportunity to break that. I'm with you, Jesse, though, on this thing here. They've got to get the ground game going. First down runs being positive. Lee takes a shot. Looking for a Holt downfield. Hardy Ricks was in coverage. Craig, I, I just think on first down plays, when the defense is playing big zones like that, you're throwing these incompletions, you're just throwing downs away. Now you're setting yourself up behind the eight ball, second and one. You long. said they had to take shots, though. You just you didn't like well, that particular not shot. On for, not on first down against well, the big zone defense. And, and like we that. came into this game saying that Zach Lee, one of the greatest things he had coming in was he had a running game. Roy Hallou was a really leading Big 12 in rushing. The guy can run the football. So at some point, Watson's got to change it up and run the ball on first down. Thinks about running now throws it is very close to the line of scrimmage pass incomplete and there is a flag down Holt was in the area but did he cross the line or was the lineman downfield whatever it is we got yet another penalty ineligible receiver legally downfield on the offense number 74 penalties decline third down that might be on the quarterback. He was back there a long time, and 
very close to the line of scrimmage could have taken off. Yeah he could have taken off but you've seen that they're, they're pretty fast the linebackers that are sucking him up as soon as these quarterbacks leave the pocket. That's the third or fourth time tonight when Zach Lee has been on the run. He's really thrown behind his wide receivers. He's really struggled with his accuracy when he's gotten outside the pocket in these sloppy conditions tonight. Yeah I'd be interested Aaron if you can find out from both quarterbacks are they trying to think about gloves on the sidelines what are they doing when they're on the sidelines. It's a night for flotation devices here at Columbia. Hello, back in the game now on third and ten. Lee has time, delivers high, and over the hands of Niles Paul. Six for 18. You see the weather playing a little bit of factor for both Niles Paul as well. It's stumbling, getting out of his break. That's, that's how that's a leader for you though. Mr. Sue comes over and says hey look don't worry about it hanging there defense will keep you in the game. Mr. Sue might need to recover a fumble if we're going to have some points tonight for Pick the it up and score too. Henry will try to pin the Tigers deep. Carl Geddes stands at a seven yard line. That one angles out. They'll spot it at about the ten yard line. So Mizzou takes over 6:20 before halftime, 2-0 Tigers. <laughs> Welcome back to the Missouri Derby. You're going to be a mutter tonight if you're in a race. The good night for the Affleck Duck, and here's the trivia question: The only two former Tigers in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. One of them, not that tough. One of them leaps to mind because it hasn't been that long. The other one. Got to go back a little bit, I think. I think I know what position he played. I just don't know what his name is. You don't have, you don't have an idea? I think he played for about 40 years in the NFL. <laughs> Cardinals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Washington on first down. And this Missouri team stumbling around just 51 yards of offense. They've been starting slowly. Eh? Now Bowling Green, they were down a couple touchdowns until the third quarter. They trailed Nevada as well, but that's an ugly looking drive chart. Especially the number of plays. It's just, there's just zero there. I, I am I'm telling you, watching this Nebraska defensive line pursue the football, they are playing fast. Robert gingerly moving around back there in the Gimpy ankle. Fire is complete. It's Washington, and he has a first down at the 22. Compton on the stop. Aaron. <laughs> Gabbard still limping. We'll check Aaron's microphone in a second. Tigers right back to, up to the line here. Finally get a first down, the first of the second quarter. Little option here. Gabbard keeping, keeping, and getting very little. Not going to work too well with a quarterback who's not that shifty and's got a bum ankle. Wow, why didn't he pitch that football? I mean, he, he, the, the pursuit was coming from the inside out, not playing ahead of game. Maybe afraid, Jesse, that he's going to pitch left-handed wet ball. Maybe not a great call. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, ball security certainly is important, Craig, in this football game in so many aspects for the quarterback position. I mean, blame I'm going to go tell Sean Watson, Coach, uh, it's not a night for the option on the ankle here. No, especially the left <laughs> side. Empty backfield on second and nine. Low snap. Here comes pressure. Gets it away complete. Over the middle. First down. Across the 40. Finally, Perry a big game. And something from the passing game. We've seen two throws now on this drive from Blake Gabbard that shows you why he's considered to be a potential pro prospect. He's only a sophomore, just natural arm strength, flipping it over the middle of the field. Yeah, Deshaun Gomes in the inside let the receiver go beyond him without help on the inside. You see big Mr. Sue bearing down up the middle on that twist. <laughs> Pretty good throw under the circumstances for Gabbert. Short gain for Washington. Craig, you had mentioned earlier you're really impressed with this Nebraska defensive line running. I think a lot of us thought Nebraska would, would be good. They're only giving up seven points a game, which is best in the nation, but hadn't yet really been tested by a good offense. Right. So far tonight, granted it is raining, but they've looked pretty outstanding. Competition's been pretty light outside of that trip to Virginia Tech. And they dominated and lost. Gabbard has time delivers incomplete. 
fired the ball. Crowd wanted a flag as Darrell Jackson was defended by Larry Asante. I, I, you know, seeing a weakness here now, I would stay to the middle of the field. Nebraska's allowing the receivers to get inside just as the timing was off a little bit on the delivery. Yeah, I really think the secondary so far for Nebraska has done a very good job breaking on routes, breaking on balls. There's been a lot of small windows for Blaine Gabbard to try to fit the football in so far tonight. Both teams just two of seven on third down. You need nine. You try the middle again and incomplete. Even if that ball was caught, it wasn't going to be a first down. Gomes defending Perry. Nothing there. Yeah, Nebraska changed it up that time. They only went with four rushing on third and long. The last time they brought five and got burned on the inside. Well, Damakong Su's promise to his quarterback, Zach Lee, we saw on the sideline a little bit ago, comes true. They get the football right back with the young quarterback to try to make plays, get some points here before the half. Hunters have been busy. And each punt has been adventurous. Mary gets it away and Burkhead lost it. It bounced right back to him at the 12. That, that lefty punt with the reverse spin, giving the return of trouble again. It just comes out at a different angle, doesn't it, Jesse? When you're catching a left-footed punt, the ball's coming down, dropping a different way. 44 yards, they dodge a bullet again on special teams. Well, how'd you do with her athletic trivia question? The two former Missouri Tigers in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. One of them, not that tough. The tight end, Kellen Winslow, of course, the phenomenal career inducted 95. And Roger Worley was a DB forever. Seven Pro Bowls, the St. Louis Cardinals, just down the road here. Both those guys honored in the football complex here in Missouri. Oh, yeah, you walk into that facility, there are two huge banners hanging from the ceiling of those guys. So the Huskers take over 333 before halftime down 2 nil and Hellahu hit in the backfield. There's Sean Weatherspoon. You hear the crowd saying spoon. One of the top linebackers in the country. Sean Witherspoon is a tackling machine. He had 155 last year that led the Big 12. Craig, he's got a nose for the football. Well, you know, he attacks. You see him back here at the top, all right? Watch how fast, once he recognizes run, watch him fill the lane. Down the lane, get in the game. They forget to block him. How can you forget to block number 12? He's right there. Hit that guy. Let's see if they play it cautious now on second and 12 here. With a struggling quarterback. Don't blitz. Lee delivers complete far side. A short gain. It'll be third down. Check back with Kevin. Chris, coming up on the IBM Halftime Report, the latest on Tim Tebow's health heading into Saturday's big showdown against LSU. Mark May offers some solutions for the Gators' offense if they play without Tebow. And a playoff finish out in L.A. you don't want to miss. We'll see you at the half. Well, they want to miss it in this state. <laughs> Cardinals letting one slip away. It's a baseball crazed state, but this is football weather tonight. It's a baseball score. <laughs> Under center, Lee, short drop, first down strike, caught of the 25 yard line, and now they're a big hit, but Holt held on as Hobson came quickly. Nebraska has all their timeouts remaining right now. It's a nice job there, though, exactly working one side of the field. It's not there. Coming back to his open receiver. Alou in the quick toss. He's cut down for no gain. Simmons has had an active first half cut him down. They don't spend a timeout. It just feels like on a running play, they're balanced defensively. They're not really hard up eight in the box. But there's one guy coming clean from the secondary. It's just sort of a half-hearted attempt by Nebraska to do something before halftime, not spending a timeout there. Clock ticking inside a minute 20. <laughs> Lee fires incomplete. There's Halu out of the backfield. Hobson in coverage. 
Clock stopped at 106. Well, there doesn't seem to be a big sense of urgency no. right now for this Nebraska <laughs> offense. Taking a lot of time at the line of scrimmage. Well, now all of a sudden, advantage just went across to Missouri, right? About this plate, this clock. Three timeouts, minute six. Now advantage, Tigers. It'll be Missouri, no doubt, using a timeout if they stop Nebraska here. We'll see if Sean Watson likes just to run it, make him spend the timeout. Freshman Burkhead is the tailback. He's going to throw far side, way over the head of Holt. That's really been the only area of the football field, I think, so far tonight. Zach Lee has had a lot of success throwing on the perimeter outside, comeback throws, pitches. Wide field throws like that, though, on third and long, very difficult to complete, especially in this weather. Bad news, they have to punt. So <laughs> exactly. look, look out for the snap. Henry's back there, and I'm telling you, nothing boring about the punts tonight. There have been a lot of them, but they've been tough to execute. The snap. A low boot on the run. Fielded. Geddes into the secondary. Makes a man miss and gets down inside the 30. So Missouri with 48 seconds to go. Great field position. And there's a flag near the spot of the tackle. After the play, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the receiving team number 31. 15 yard penalty. First down. That's just inexcusable. Trey Hobson, the backup corner, moving Missouri back 15 yards after the nice return by Geddes. Yeah, the, 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 the rugby style kick worked in one manner because it disrupted the punt return blocking. But look at this blow here. Oh, that, that's a bonehead play right there. Inexcusable. The play's over. Jog to the sidelines. Except the football near the 30 yard line going in. Missouri and Nebraska, not the friendliest of rivals. Both teams keyed up, but it's led to perhaps a lot of mental mistakes in this first half. So. Mizzou at the 44 with all their timeouts. Gabbert fires incomplete. He was behind Alexander, well covered. Philip Dillard, the linebacker, was right on him out of that slot position. And you know what? And the fans are booing right now. They're acting like it's a pass interference, but the middle of the field, it is a good job, Chris. The guy did time it right to block it down. A long throw by Gabbert, incomplete on the sidelines. Even with the penalty, Missouri a good opportunity with three timeouts to make use of this field position in plus territory. Jesse, what do you got think? Got a field goal kicker that it hasn't missed this year. Yeah, and what do you think about this foot? See if he's pushing off and throwing. It doesn't really look like he's being able to drive, and certainly there is some action in front of him. Guess who again, bearing down on him. Need about 15 yards to get in range for Grant Russell in terms of his career long of 46. They take a shot down the field. Perry in the neighborhood collects it at the five. Good job by Perry, who was turned around in the throw, came back to the ball. It's first and goal. In the pocket, now, watch Gabbert here. Not push story, off his back leg. Half, watch this. He throws off his front out. leg. It's a lot of natural arm strength. Lost his receiver, Jared Perry. He was running by Prince Abu Kamara, who actually fell down on the play. And he was just able to kind of feel that like a punt, doing a nice job turning around and finding the back shoulder throw. Yeah, deja vu for Bo Pelini, who saw his defense play so well against Virginia Tech, then get burned by a big pass to lose the game. Missouri set up at the five yard line now. The Pepsi 500, NASCAR, Sunday at 2.30 on ABC. Mark Martin, plantar fasciitis. He can barely walk to the car. He kind of limps over there, but once he gets there, there's nothing wrong with his gas pedal foot. Hey, you know what, Jesse? You busted us last week, Fowler, because we had some nice nuggets on this. Yeah. Here we go. Come on. Go ahead, get, get, get through it. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson, 18 points back. So Missouri first and goal at the six yard line. Still two timeouts.
Gabbert loops into the end zone. A miscommunication with his receiver. Cutting inside was Alexander. The ball delivered outside. Missouri has not been great in the red zone this year. In 15 trips, they've only scored seven touchdowns. I think a big reason why is because their inability to run the football. Certainly with this much time left, you got to throw it, but precision, Craig. Yeah, you know what, though? With two timeouts, a little draw on the inside of the field is not a bad move either. You take out the Furman game, Jesse. Only four touchdowns in 10 red zone trips against 1A opponents from Missouri. You like the middle there? They hand it to Washington, running left. And he's cut down at the three. I'll have to spend a timeout with 19 seconds until halftime. Philip Dillard, nice tackle. I, I like Chris. I like the hole in the middle of the field. I didn't circle the outside of the field where they were <laughs> lined up. <laughs> But as an offense, that makes sense, right? You're running against a five-man box or a six-man box. You spread them out offensively. You have numbers to get your talented running back a crease somewhere. And you have the luxury, really, of having these timeouts to call those plays. So Missouri's offense so ineffective throughout the entire game, trying to get something here. Only points on that safety. But... Uh, Go up, you know, nine zip on a night like this with the defense playing well and Zach Lee struggling could be enormous. What happens here in the next couple plays? There's no question about it. They just need points, period. So this is not a field goal game right now, but you'd love to get that touchdown. Sloppy conditions, penalties on both sides. Neither offense is really a big looked difference right here, don't you think? Between Absolutely. three and seven, given Absolutely. the conditions. But we're still expecting some goofy play, a big play to happen like that whole Murray throw down there just a moment ago. And there's a whistle. And Nebraska will spend a time out on defense here for checking the alignment of the Tigers. I think Pelini and his brother Carl understand the importance of this situation right here. Try to go into the locker room down just five as opposed to nine zip. How about number 81 down here on the goal line? 6-5, Denario Alexander. The best receiver on this team. Really have you called his name tonight, Chris? He's, he was active early. They went to him, but he hasn't done much since the first couple of series. If I was Nebraska defensively right now, I would bring pressure up the middle because Blaine Gabbert's a big gimpy. He doesn't if you could push him outside and get him on the perimeter. He's not running well. Try to get him to force a throw. Get yourself into a field goal situation. Or, or, yeah, I, I got guess. the tight end too. Andrew Jones, number 87, is a pretty good receiver as well. He's flexed out in the slot to the right. Big play, third and goal. Washington running left. Not going to get the goal line. Picked up about a yard and a half. It'll be fourth down. And clock ticking now. Eight, seven. Missouri will have to spend its final timeout. And then have to settle for a field goal attempt, you'd think, from the one-yard line. Well, it's really, it's, it might be a little bit more. It's a long yard if that is a yard. With Damakong Sue and some of those defensive tackles, I'd, I'm taking the field goal, Craig. Five points in this football game here. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's a frustrating sequence. You could tell the Missouri offense walking to the sidelines. A great opportunity to get a touchdown there and again coming short in the red zone. I think with Gabbert's gimpy ankle, he limits you. If you're doing a quarterback read, he's not going to keep the football. You know who's going to get it, your ball carrier. I like Missouri's idea of trying to run the football down there. Because they had the timeouts, I think they would have liked to crease them more. Give Nebraska a lot of credit on defense for running to the football and making tackles. Their field goal kicker is Grant Russell. He won the job in the final scrimmage. He's a sophomore. He's 10 for 10 in field goals. He's not on the field right now. Missouri giving a look like they're going to go for this from the one yard line. Interesting. Washington in motion. Gabber keeps it. Gimpy ankle and all gets to the end zone as time expires in the first half. A gamble by Pinkle and a gimpy quarterback just able to get it across the goal line. Well, Craig, they fooled us on this. We thought with that gimpy ankle on the zone read, Blaine Gabbert would never pull it. But you see the ends crash. Damakong Su gets squeezed inside. Previous that allows the quarterback to make a play. Does he get across the goal line? They're reviewing it. The knee went down. 
as the ball was near that plane. The ball came loose after he crossed the goal line, but did he cross the line before the knee was down? This is a huge review and a real gamble by Pinkle. If he gets stopped short here, if they re review this and rule it no touchdown, oh, he will I be don't questioned. Know. I don't know. That left knee looked like it hit pretty early. But can we see where the football was when the knee was on the ground? We have a another angle. A lot on the line in this review. No, no time left. If they review this and they determine that he was out of the end zone. This is a two nothing game going into halftime. The issue is was the ball across the plane before the knee was down and did he have control of the ball and he crossed the goal line because it did come loose. Gary Pickle a lot of credit for going for it. But well, also I'll give him the, credit if, he, if it's a touchdown. The, 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 the play <laughs> call that was a good play call. Yeah I don't know man I tell you it, it, fooled everybody if he gets stopped for a loss there in the bad ankle he's going to be questioned Pickle. Indisputable video evidence. Has to come out of there, right? Yep. Yep. And so I, you know, from what I've seen so far, I don't haven't seen anything to reverse it. After further review, the ruling on the field stands is called touchdown. It was close. It was gutsy, but it's a touchdown. Gary Pickles a genius. We think. <laughs> Let's take a look again. Lowers the shoulder. Ball crosses right. Knee is down right there. The uh, ball is it, is, it down? is it is it touching? Is it touching? Is the knee down? Ooh, it's wow. very, very that is close. Very close. And a body of a Nebraska defender kind of obscured the view of the camera along the goal line. But the call of the field stands. Nebraska fans may not buy it, but Gabbert makes it nine zip as we go to Aaron Andrews. Coach, your defense had played so well the entire half. What happened on that last drive? Well, we had a corner who fell down. <laughs> and. Uh, on the last play, we had a blitz up, and, we, and the guy didn't go. We had a busted assignment. We would have hit the quarterback in the backfield, but, we, you know, we got it's a lot of football to be played. We'll be all right. All right, Coach. Thank you. See ya. 38-yard pass to Perry sets up the touchdown run by Gabbert, and it's 9-zip Missouri on a rainy night in Columbia. Kevin Nagandi in our ESPN studio for the IBM Halftime Report. Kevin? Set for the second half, ESPN's college football primetime presented by Applebee's. Missouri scoring in the final play of the first half. A Blaine Gabbert touchdown run, a gutsy call by Pinkle, a very close call for the replay officials. They allow the score, and now it's Nebraska getting the ball first, but in a hole and looking for offensive production. 14 possessions combined, both teams in the first half, 11 punts, a fumble, and a safety. And the, the behind the scenes deal that really strikes me is the special teams of Nebraska yeah. all the slop that they've had out there they've allowed Missouri to gain confidence and they've really had no momentum with their football team a lot of penalties early in this game as well oh, yeah. for both schools really hurting themselves especially early on drives they really got to narrow down on those mistakes mentally trying to keep those footballs dry for the second half Huskers will get it to start but a troubling first half for Zach Lee. Moy Halu never really able to get loose on the running game. 15 carries, or 15 yards, I should say, on six carries. That's it for the talented tailback. Mm, guy that leads the Big 12 in rushing. Tanner Mills, the kickoff specialist. He's got a strong leg. This one bouncing out of bounds. Strong leg, but not what you want to do. And the Oscars will start at the 40 after the penalty tonight's coaching adjustments brought to you by the Home Depot. Yeah you know what we've really tried to pinpoint where Missouri's doing well on defense Nebraska's offensive line's not fitting up on everybody. There's that extra guy up there very visible right there again here with a linebacker Weatherspoon. And Nebraska knew coming into this game they would have to run against eight man boxes but like you said Craig linemen wide receivers tight ends they need to chip up and account for some of these unblocked players if they're going to get production early in the running game. Don't you guys feel there's just no respect from Missouri for Nebraska's downfield passing game at all. None. Still a driving rain as we begin the third quarter. Hello is the tailback. He's got the ball. Not much of a game as we check with Aaron Andrews on the field. Yeah. I asked Gary 
about going for it on fourth and one and how he could even think about doing that with Blaine Gabbard's ankle. And he said, I know he's a competitor. I knew he would gut it out, and I'm glad it worked. He also mentioned, you know, here in the second half, they're going to have to pay close attention to Gap. He did take a shot in that first half, and, and you know, it's stiffen up a bit. Guys, also, Nebraska has no lights on in their locker room. They conducted that <laughs> halftime with flashlights. Wow, another casualty of the blackout as the snap gets away. Lee tries to cover it. There's still a scrum. Gatskar comes up with the football. He recovered the fumble early on the missed punt. You know what, Aaron? The lights have not been on for Nebraska all night offensively either, so there's no surprise there. The snap over, get on the football, pick the ball up, cover it up. It didn't look to me like Zach Lee was even ready for this snap, and if he was, where was the center snapping that football? Missouri right now, guys, maybe has a chance to end this game right now. First possession, second half. If they can score a touchdown, this thing could be over already. And Nebraska's offense is playing. I get your point. Washington. Looks up just two. You know, we, we came into this football game wanting to know how Zach Lee and the offense in Nebraska would play in their first really big game, right? You know, of, of, of conference significance. Well, Zach Lee really struggled, remember, against Virginia Tech. Eight of, or 11 of 30 in that game, only 8 of 22 tonight. Empty backfield. Washington in the slot on second and nine. Gabbard fires low and incomplete. He's looking for West Kemp. I think the critical errors tonight have come from Nebraska. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Fumbled punts, Little shanked bit. punts. Now they fumbled five, only lost two of them. Snaps. Yeah. Little things. And that, and Bo Pelini's had a team that was pretty respected this year because they hadn't been doing a lot of bonehead things. And he felt like his team would be able to handle these conditions no problem. There's Washington. He's knocked down short of a first down. And it's interesting, really. Nebraska coming into the game has been great in sudden change. They've had three turnovers on the year, but have not allowed any points off of those turnovers. Here's the first opportunity for Missouri to capitalize on that. Well, they'll try for three points. Grant Russell, again, thought we'd see a field goal attempt late in the first half. 10 for 10. The only guy to be perfect in college football who's tried that many. Walk-on kicker from 43 yards. Snap is handled well, but this kick drifts and misses. He hooked it, so the first miss of the season for Russell. And Missouri comes up empty after the fumble. ABC regional coverage at 3.30 Eastern time on Saturday. Baylor minus Robert Griffin, the quarterback, which is tough. Will Sam Bradford play for Oklahoma, Oregon, UCLA? Good one of the Pac-10. They'll be at Connecticut, Pittsburgh, Craig. Yep, good ball game. Big, big East ball game. And Nebraska still down 9-zip after the missed field goal. Takes over at the 25. Needing to create some kind of a big play, something downfield to loosen up this defense. On the option, the late pitch to Halu. He gets the corner and dives for about a seven-yard gain. We're just talking about it in break. There's a penalty flag now on the field late. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the defense number 32. Targeting the player with his helmet. 15 yards to the dead ball spot. First down. Will Lebner, the sophomore linebacker, hitting Lee. It's interesting, you know, this is something the referees said they were going to look at more seriously. I think this is the first time we've called the game this year. We've actually seen this call. Well, we've seen several times to the quarterback, at the quarterback, right? Watch, watch Lee. You hear the helmet pop there. All major penalties on Missouri, six of them so far. Lee's been trying to smile through all the pain and misery tonight. I used to try that too, but didn't work. <laughs> not so much. I didn't. I just get back in the huddle and be quiet, try to lull him to sleep. <laughs> sleep. You can't be having much fun out there, but they're still in the game. If they can create something here. Pressure from Missouri. They pick it up and Lee fires. No chance. Mm -hmm. Just no chance. 
Antonio Bell is a true freshman receiver. He's pointing to himself like he didn't do the right thing on the route. Very dangerous, though. Craig and I were pointing at each other up here in the booth because, you know, this wet weather, throwing these balls on outside of the perimeter, if it's not precise, it, it might be pick six. And it was late. That's why I'm saying get back to the middle of the field. I haven't seen Nebraska work in the middle of Missouri's defense. I'd go inside. I'd try to work them inside. Lou Jr. Muscled out of the 49. Alden Smith forced him out. See the speed right there. The freshman defensive end, Alden Smith, chasing Halu Jr. It's amazing. Halu Jr. came into the game averaging 116 rushing yards. Right now, I mean, for this drive, he's got 27 right now. I mean, they're really doing a good job containing him. Under I, three yards of carry, and he came, he came in averaging 6.4. But aren't you impressed with Missouri's defense and their speed that they have in that seven? They're getting up there. They're also committing a lot of guys to stop the run. They don't fear downfield passing. Lee needs seven on third down. And now a flag. Again, the 25 second clock's not on the Full field. Start on the offense. Number 65, five yard penalty, third down. Just a couple of ticks left, and Mike Smith, the left tackle, flinched. But even just five yards makes such a big difference when you're trying to move the chains. Third and seven is so much different than third and 12, isn't it, Craig? All right, you know what? It, Bo Pelini said going in at halftime that we'll be all right. Well, he won't be all right. They won't be all right unless they stop making those mistakes. Third and 12. He fires on the sidelines. Incomplete. It was a low throw. Brandon Kinney, the sophomore, had a play on it. Brian Coulter off the edge there was pressuring Lee. All right, now these wide receivers, they're so focused with this weather and rain on using their body to catch the ball. How many times have we seen it just go right between the body, the arms? They're not worried about their hands. The catches that have to be made drive killers on this very difficult night to throw the football. Buskers still haven't hit triple digits in total yards. Came in averaging 440. Henry gets the punt away. It's a big kangaroo hop at the end. Gettis trying to make something happen. It's dropped at the 20. So Mizzou back on offense, protecting a 9-0 lead. Shakes Pizza here in Columbia. That's a good late night pizza spot. At that place, you get Harpo's famous local tavern. You know the spot. <laughs> I think you know some Missouri grads. Uh, Cheryl Crow, graduate, comes from Kennett, Missouri. I'm sure she had a brew or two in Harpo's <laughs> during her years <laughs> as an her, undergrad. Brought her guitar. That's where they're headed to. I guarantee you there's a beer in their future after putting up with this weather tonight. It, it was in their past as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is the rain, is it letting up or is it my imagination? There's a first down throw from Gabbert, maybe. Tries to get away, flips it short. Washington trying to make a man miss and he can't. Good solid tackle for a loss there by Eric Hag, the backup safety. If Nebraska is going to win this game, it's going to be by their defense. Their offense has shown that. So here on this side of the field, they've got to come up with a play. Craig, it's incredible. I mean, you look at both of these offenses coming in. They were totaling 900 yards of offense. There's a little bit over 230 so far. They hand it off in motion. Washington trying to muscle for a short gain. It'll set up third and about seven for Gabbert. You know, he's when you look at just the second halves of ball games, the most efficient guy in the country. Only 10 incompletions, six touchdown passes, a lot of big plays, long gains in the second half. In games that were still on the line. Oh, yeah. Those were not that was not mop-up duty by any stretch. Not at all. They had to rally against Bowling Green and Nevada. But I don't know if big plays are going to happen tonight against this defense in these conditions. Gabbert firing short. Incomplete. Crowd wanting a flag as Denard was defending Perry. No flag. Here comes another punt. I, I think we've seen three or four times now going to the middle of the field that there's been really de good defensive plays batting the ball. And Nebraska's defense steps up again and stops Missouri. Did he get there too soon? See right here. Watch Denard. 
Yeah. 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 And kind of went through right in the middle of the bat. Depends on who you're pulling for. That's right. With the 13th punt of this game. Jake Carey the fourth and the freshman Burkhead who had his troubles. Remember, muffed the last one but fell on it. A very, very late fair catch made at the 30 yard line, and that's where the Cornhuskers will take over as we check back with Kevin in the studio. Chris, each week you vote for the AT&T All-America Player of the Week. This week's winner, Golden Tate of Notre Dame. He caught nine balls for 244 yards in the Irish dramatic win over Washington. Text the word VOTE to 345-345 on your mobile phone to vote and for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. Guys, back to you. Notre Dame finding ways to win. Jimmy Clausen, by the way, will join us on College Game Day this Saturday morning. It was another short gain. Halu just getting the corner, but just hasn't been able to bust loose. Sean Weatherspoon tracking him down. Nebraska was trying earlier in the game to run inside. No success. Here they come out in the second half now trying to get outside. Not much better. Well, when they go in, when they tried to go inside, we showed you coming out of halftime that they're not manning up. They're letting safeties come up inside the box and linebackers go free. They're not matching up with everybody. Lose in the slot now. Lee has plenty of time, has nobody open, fires low, incomplete. The ball hit the ground. Watching Missouri play defensively right now, because they're not allowing big yards on first down running plays, they're content to just lay back and play big zones. It's really hard right now for Zach Lee to find anybody open. Only four rushing, seven in coverage. At some point, a Nebraska receiver is going to have to work his way back and make a play for Zach Lee. And they're trying to use some younger receivers now. The veterans haven't been having any success. They're bringing guys like Antonio Bell, Brandon Kinney in the ballgame. 9-16 left in the third quarter. The clock not working. Go to nine. Lee bought some time, fired high, and over the head of Kinney. Oh, for his last six. Dave Steckel, the defensive coordinator at Missouri, has done a heck of a job of mixing it up. You know, Jesse, he told us yesterday, we're going to blitz when we get off the bus and keep blitzing. That time he dro dropped eight into coverage. He said Nebraska has not seen a lot of blitzes so far this year, but you're right, mixing it up and really keeping exactly off balance. Carl Geddes, the punt returner who limped off the last return. He's also a starting corner. He's out. Brandon Giroux is in there. And this is a deep punt. Takes a tricky bounce. And goes out about the 14-yard line. Well, this Saturday, night football features a Big Ten battle. Kirk Ferentz, undefeated Iowa, hosting Tate Forcier in the Michigan Wolverines, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific, more logon to ESPN.com. How about the true freshman Tate Forcier? Had they won at Michigan State last week? Right. And he had brought them back late again to get another rally late in a win. You think people would be talking about Heisman with them? If As he, a true freshman? Why not? Why get not? Rid the, get rid of the classification. Why not? Voters have inherent biases. Why not? Yeah. Kevin Moore, a little room in traffic. Missouri will take that on first down, given the lack of success tonight. Well, all of the top three guys or four guys, whoever, however many you had in there in the Heisman race this year, they've done nothing. There's nobody really jumped out there and said, Jimmy Cross is playing pretty good football. Yeah, he's playing great football. Colton McCoy's playing pretty good football. Tim Tebow's played well as well. There's the pitch, but this is going nowhere. Moore just swallowed up, loses the yards they gained on first down. Pierre Allen from the defensive end with the tackle for loss. Pierre Allen is a guy that defensive coordinator Carl Polini loves because he plays the run so well, Craig. <laughs> well, <laughs> Blaine Gabbert wasn't absolutely attacking him, putting pressure on him to do anything, was he? He <laughs> let him cover two guys with one body. The ends are pretty good here, too. That hackles get the hype, but they think Pierre Allen could be the next great one at that position for Nebraska. Former Colorado High School basketball player of the year. And third down, Gabbard steps up and delivers a clutch throw. Catch made near the marker. 
Mario Alexander was spotting the ball right on the yellow line. It should be a first down. It is. Mario Alexander is the big weapon for Missouri, particularly on third down. At six foot five, he's got a lot of range, can make a lot of tricky catches. Had the four catches earlier. That's his first grab since the first quarter. None of them for very long yardage. It's a great story, Alexander. We talked about beating out Jeremy Macklin in 2007. He had three knee surgeries. And a broken wrist as well. Ball. Bad hit down. And big man rolling around on the ground there as Barry Turner had a chance for a pick six. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Turner, he has three tackles for losses, so he's used to playing behind the line of scrimmage, but he will have nightmares about that. <laughs> Wayne Gabbard didn't even get time to have the laces, just try to shoot it out there real quick. It's not just hard for the wide receivers to catch passes tonight, Chris. Well, Blaine still hasn't thrown a pick in his career, but he was very lucky. That play could have turned this whole thing around. On second and ten, Alexander hammered. Is it a catch and a fumble? No signal. Now they rule incomplete. Alfonso Denard hammered him. Missouri might be one of the best teams in the country throwing these slip screens out to these wide receivers, but it's tough to account for a lot of pass rush and a very aggressive, ferocious secondary coming up quick on these balls. Two times now we've seen Nebraska come up really quickly, strongly, and pursue and hit the receiver. But I don't know. It's very close very to very having close. possession yeah. and a fumble, and they'll stop the game to review it. I'll try it over to check. The game clock needs to be reset to 714. 7:14. So it's not a review. Tigers fell on the ball anyway. The clock in the stadium reads 658. They want to put about 16 more seconds on it. But going back to that play, I'm not so sure he didn't have possession of that football. What'd you guys think? It looked like he had it to cop back when he got hit. His back was to our cameras. It was tough to tell, but again, Missouri fell on the ball. I, I, I can't say enough about Nebraska's defense and how they have kept their football team in this game. This is a they're playing like the defense that they want to be as a unit, not not just one guy, but like the old black shirt. No, what's up, Craig? You're right. They don't have the black shirt. That's a good point. They they needed to earn that right back. Great tradition. Where the defensive players who earned that right wore the black shirts in practice. They took that away last year. There are no black shirts right now. Ever fires high. Catch made in traffic, but short of the first down is Alexander. This time is Larry Asante, who's there to wrap him up. That's a great play by senior strong safety Larry Asante, understanding where the first down marker is, making the play in front of him, securing the tackle. Been a misadventure for the Huskers on special teams. That ball off the heel of one of the blockers. Missouri couldn't do anything with that. Say they've used a couple different punt returns. Each guy has muffed one, and Nebraska's been lucky to retain possession. So here's Jay Carey, the fourth again. Another low line drive kick, bouncing very near a poor Husker. They managed to get away that time. Mokamara very nearly had that touch him, and this rolls dead all the way at the 11 yard line. So, special teams edge for Missouri, 57 yards on that one, very nearly another muff or field position for that struggling Nebraska offense. The Flintstones in the house. What kind of Stone Age football? These teams have combined for just 253 total yards. 619 to play in this third quarter, and Nebraska has to be careful at their own 11 yard line. Hello, Junior dropped in the backfield. Will Ebner, that linebacker, making up for that 15 yard penalty in the previous possession. You know what? And once again, you're going to see a linebacker. I think it's right here. It's going to come clean right through. Just beats the running back to the hole and will ever a guy who had to replace the starter Luke Lambert here the last couple weeks he's been unbelievable as a replacement how about Nebraska guys only two series this game where they've run more than four plays 
He got 96 yards of offense on 45 plays tonight. Lee pulls it, keeps it. Abner tracks him down again. Good-looking sophomore linebacker from Texas, like so many of these Missouri Tigers. 33 different players from the state of Texas on this Missouri football team, and, and they've really done a great job, Gary Pinkle and his staff, of going in and finding players that can run. Only seven up here in the box, Jesse, and they're smushing Nebraska. And Craig, we've been talking all night how good Nebraska's looked on defense. Dave Steckel's squad right now, they're up to the task. And it was not a strong defense a year ago. This is a whole bunch of fresh faces in 09 playing very well. Third and 13. Tigers believe that the Nebraska lineman flinched. And they're right. Half the distance. Tough night for those guys up front for Nebraska. They felt like they'd have a big edge against this Missouri defensive line. On the road, loud environment, difficult to hear the quarterback, hear the cadence, and it's hurt them so far tonight. Well, Missouri's players were quick to tell us, all in unison, how important this game was to show the country that they're not a one-and-done organization. That this football team wants to be considered a top-20 team every year, not just only when Chase Daniel and Jeremy Macklin were here. Yeah, consistent, double-digit, Big 12-type contender. It looked like one so far in this game. Third and 17, and Lee is standing in the end zone here. It's a little quarterback draw, and he's hammered at the six. Spoon came up and leveled him. That Butkus finalist from a year ago, leading tackler on this defense. Go, go back to what you guys were just talking about. You know, this is a defense and a team that feels disrespected. Here's a way to get a lot of that back when you're leading tackler and team leader on defense, making big plays in critical situations. A lot more punting. <laughs> than oh, running and passing. <laughs> I have never seen a graphic like that. That's great. That's a pretty good putt. Geddes is back in the game as the returner fields it at the 50. Skips down the sideline. Still going inside the 35. Kind of a sneaky return in traffic. And a huge play. For the special teams of Missouri, Nebraska's been having all these issues tonight, kicking the ball, fielding kicks. Missouri on special teams now with an opportunity where they got Nebraska backed up. Make a big play in the return game. Well, the defense has been getting the job done. The special teams and the offense have not. At some point, Missouri is going to put the boot and kick them to the curb eventually in this game. Kick them to sleep. <laughs> They only met at 28 yards after the 16-yard return by Geddes. Washington. It's a little bit of a crease. Brought down from behind there by big Mr. Sue. By the way, he said that's what he, he calls his father, who was born in Africa. Yes, sir, Mr. Sue, is what he says to his dad. Respectful. Well, I think a lot of the linemen from Missouri should be calling him Mr. Sue right now. He's had his way with everybody up front. Washington again. Same play. Stiff arm. Big hit and a flag down at the tackle. And Mukamara wrestled him down. Then we'll check the marker. So many crucial flags hurting both offenses tonight. Personal foul. Face mask on a defense number 21. Half the distance of the goal. Automatic. First down. Zuna Mukamara. This is what happens when a defense is asked to be on the field play after play eventually something negative it happens and Missouri's offense is going to sometime they're going to come up and make a play and put it in the end zone. This is where both these teams need to be so poised a big drive for Missouri heading in. They can't afford penalties like what happened earlier to them in the game and move them back. Nebraska with their backs to the wall. They can't compound the problem with dumb penalties like that. See what I mean Shannon? Holman was ruled a 15-yarder, not a five-yarder. Empty backfield. Here comes the pressure. Gabbard wisely throws it away, and there's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Pierre Allen, off the defensive edge, was pressuring the quarterback. Potentially back-to-back -back penalties here 
for Nebraska's D. Offside. Defense number 99. Five yard penalty. First down. Barry Turner, the end. A little tweak in this Missouri game plan tonight was the offensive line. They've been wide in their splits. They came back tight earlier. They've gone back wide tonight trying to spread out some of those great defensive line. And you saw Turner there. He had a chance to turn this game around. Couldn't collect the Gabbard pass. Could have waltzed in the end zone. Instead, Missouri trying to build on its lead. And Washington weaving through traffic. Picks up a couple. I like one play could have really switched things, but again, it, they've had very few opportunities in Nebraska. Well, uh, especially on offense, they, they really had none. And so they're waiting for something good to happen. Right now, Missouri, I like the play call. Oh, yeah. Running the football, yeah. sticking Don't with it on the ground. Yeah. Nine nothing, and, and, and knowing Nebraska can do nothing offensively. Tigers spread them out on second and four. Washington running to his right. Flag comes down again as Washington gets first and goal yardage, but that's in the holding zone. Oh, Missouri's going to be sick. Holding on the offense, number 78. 10 yard penalty, second down. It's big Curtis Gregory, the senior leader up there, very smart guy, farmer. Yeah, he's a hog farmer, and we hate to call him out on this thing here. He was wrestling a, a hog to the ground there. Is that, he, is that the he, form you use when you wrestle a hog? He, he got him to the ground, and you can do that in a hog pen. You can do use your hands and hold and everything, but but can't do it on the football field. But Curtis Gregory, a guy that graduated in May of last year with a degree in agriculture, he's a second-year grad student. He was talking PTOs and all things about tractors. He was getting all technical, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. The stuff. Yeah. Tigers seventh penalty backs him up. Gabbard fires over the middle, almost intercepted again. Asante cut in front, couldn't come up with it. Another opportunity to make a play for the defense, and they, they can't do it. You know, Missouri hasn't necessarily been pushing the football downfield that much either, and because of that, these safeties are able to squat. Larry Asante, a senior, he had a big interception for a return in their last win against Louisiana Lafayette. He's just watching Blaine Gabbard's eyes breaking on the ball. Backfield again on third and 12. Gabbard fires. Almost intercepted by Sue. He dropped into coverage from his tackle position right at him. You know what? I, I can probably assure you that they will have the jugs machines. Yeah, look at Sue in the middle of your screen, 93, dropping back, reading the eyes. How, we've seen three tonight, haven't we? How surprised are you that Demacon Sue's not rushing? How about that call from Carl Polanyi? Yeah, here's a guy at 300 pounds that's taken a couple of picks to the house last year. Would have been a long run for him there. Grant Russell had missed his first field goal of the season earlier tonight. Missed that one left. Sneaks this one through from 33 yards. And Missouri goes up 12-nothing with a minute 26 in the third. 12's a lot better than 16. It, Obviously, it could have been. It, it yeah. could have been. It could have been 16, though, for Missouri. Holding, holding penalty. They get the ball down in first and goal, and another penalty shoots them in the foot. In Nebraska, a couple of opportunities to come up with picks on that possession. Lane Gabbard is a charm guy. Still hasn't thrown one, but he's had a couple bounce off guys. That Mr. Sue's been active. The tackle that caused the ankle problem for Gabbert early. And he does everything you ask of a defensive tackle. He gets in the backfield, causes pressure on the quarterback, makes tackles in the backfield, hurries quarterbacks, knocks passes down. They drop him in coverage. He's such a great athlete, and it's why so many NFL scouts are drooling. Can they ask him to throw it or catch it I on offense? Show you on his goal line. <laughs> if you could get down there, I'd ask him to go on in and help him. How about return punts? <laughs> How about deep snap? <laughs> <laughs> How about Maybe punt? take a snap. <laughs> Throw the ball. Danner Mills to kick off. It's a very high short kick. Fielded and went out of bounds at the 31-yard line by Ben Cotton. Aaron? So what's the difference with this Missouri defense this year? You guys mentioned the communication. Defensive coordinator Dave Steckel said they're on the same page. Why? He credits this rhythm.
wristband, which sometimes could be used as a glove when it's cold. But he said he had them wear them the very first day of practice, has them wear them to sleep, says you have to know the plays on them. And they change these out, guys. You know that from quarter to quarter, sometimes half to half. They, he's constantly having them look down. He wants communication. He wants them talking. He said, quote, unquote, this ain't a library. Don't be quiet. I don't care if they hear you. He wants them on the same page. Aaron, they've been on the same page tonight. They, it was a problem last year. They didn't communicate well on defense. So this is the, the remedy that, that Steckel came up with. And every single call, there's a number that corresponds to, to one of the blitzes and the coverages. Chris, you just mentioned they did have a lot of problems last year. Guys couldn't communicate, couldn't get lined up properly. This year, they've been doing a good job of that heading into the game. Only eight plays of 20-plus yards. You saw him at 10 right there. So now everybody looks down, and it forces them to communicate. Look in the secondary. Everybody's hollering, talking to each other. They know what each one's responsibilities are. And 10 means something different this half than it meant last half because Steck's a, a paranoid guy like a lot of coaches. <laughs> they pitch it to Burkhead and the young guy cut down and it'll be third and short. A little urgency for Nebraska, wouldn't you agree? In this possession, down 12 now, clock ticking inside 30 seconds in the third quarter. The rain has let up. I promised Aaron it would stop raining. Nebraska. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, even though she's already soaked, Fowler. <laughs> Maybe a little late to make this crowd feel better. But the Huskers, by the way, fellas, finally, finally over 100 yards total offense as the final seconds of the quarter tick away. A buck five. That's it. He pressured, gets it away. It's Burkhead trying to make a man miss. Just does fight for a first down to the 42 before Alden Smith got to Lee. So, for the second to go in the third quarter, so as they move the chains, they'll run the clock, and we'll see if the Huskers have a fourth quarter rally in their future or if Missouri will beat their rivals for the third straight year. Well, one quarter left for Nebraska to get something going on offense. Try to rally against Missouri. Crucial game. Both teams kicking off their Big 12 campaign, and the leader really gets the inside track to win the North Division. Lee fires. It's complete. Kyler Reed, a short game. You know, it's funny, Craig. We talk to these Missouri players, and they, they feel disrespected. It's almost as if they, they're playing with a chip on their shoulder. And that's a good thing. And, and, and also the fact that Gary Pinkle has this, this motivational booklet that he passes out to all of them so that they, they really stay focused on the game and on the process of preparing for a big game. I mean, motivation through Pinkle, the players, it works together. It's all kind of new agey, isn't it? That, that manual with the different philosophies as Lee is pressured and fires on the far side. But for a very short game by Gilliland. Yeah, that, that book they're talking about, it's called We Are Mizzou. And every player gets one at the start of training camp, and it's something that Coach Pinkle refers to. It's about the psychology of competing and how to focus and handle game situations. And off the field stuff, too, right? Just Absolutely. Stuff how, to handle, how to handle adversity, disappointments. Got it from Don James when he was out at Washington. I mean, this guy's put together a book through the years of things that work psychologically. And he, and he refers to it almost every week, even during the season brainwashing their players to think the same way to compete Don James Pinkle's mentor here tonight it would mean a lot for Pinkle to shut out Nebraska in front of coach James Lee on third and eight steps up takes a shot down the middle of the field and has a man wide open Niles Paul touchdown 56 yards the Huskers finally strike and finally get on the board the best throw of the night from Zach Lee. The rain is stopped, the ball is dry, and it shows. The rain's back, actually, but it's a pretty good throw. <laughs> <laughs> We're up here in the booth. I can't see it ball. Stick to sports analysis, friend. <laughs> Your weather stuff's kind of, but you know what? It's the first ball we've seen down the middle of the field and deep. Yeah, and Robert Steeples is the backup corner there, beaten badly up the middle. And the Huskers' very first play of the final quarter draw within five after doing almost nothing all night. Stepping up in the pocket, plenty of time to deliver in a very rainy atmosphere. Touchdown, Corn Huskers. Ball game now. So Nebraska exceeds 
you know, half of their yardage total the entire night with this touchdown pass. Watch this play here. Kransky Gillen is just going to run an in route. That's going to force the safety Jasper Simmons to, to bite on it, and that allows a big post throw down the outside of the field to a wide open Niles Paul. One of the three key words defensive coordinator Steckle said that yesterday was, don't get beat over the top. And I mean, it, you can hear him saying it time and time again, got beat over the top, stay deep. Finally a spark on that Nebraska sideline and now this Husker defense will try to get the ball back. A little pressure on Gabbard in this Missouri offense all of a sudden in a five point game. Simmons, the safety, who just jumped that route, a chance to redeem himself on the kickoff return. But he gets stumped at the 20. Let's go back to Kevin now for Sports Center right now. Chris, the Cards were one out away from evening their series with the Dodgers, but Matt Holliday could not catch this fly ball in the ninth inning, keeping the Dodgers' hopes alive. Four batters later, Mark Loretta ends it with a walk-off single off Ryan Franklin. L.A. wins 3-2. They lead the series 2-zip. In Anaheim, Torrey Hunter, three-run blast off John Lester, has the Angels right now up 3-0 in the bottom of the sixth against the Red Sox. Next Sports Center coming up after the game, guys. There's an interception on first down. Big Nagawakao Su caught the ball. Gabbert fired over the middle in the traffic, and it had to happen sooner or later. The first pick of his college career comes at a bad time. In the middle of the screen, and here he is. You see him just standing there, reading the eyes, up and jumps. What is that an athlete or what? But it's a great decision. He knows he's not going to get to the quarterback here, so he just stops in his tracks, jumps up. He dropped an interception on a much easier catch earlier. He snags this one out of the air. Chris, you just said it. We're going to, Gabbert's got the pressure on him now to do something to keep the ball with Missouri. He didn't get it done. Crucial mistake in the first down throw. Now the pressure shifts over to the Missouri defense as the Huskers take over at the 18. Hello. Breaks a tackle, dives for about seven. What a turnaround here, just a matter of a few seconds. It's all it takes. I'll tell you what, Zach Lee right now, I bet is feeling it right now. That big throw just brought, raises his confidence here at this point of the game. You know who needs to feel it? The offensive line. That offensive line has not felt it all night. Missouri's manhandled them. It's time that they want to win this game to get in the mustache of that Missouri defense. Loops it for the end zone, jump ball in traffic, caught, touchdown! Niles Paul again! Two touchdowns in two minutes, and Lee is feeling it. Nebraska stunningly takes the lead. Offensive coordinator Sean Watson said he wanted to see his junior quarterback grow up in this football game, and within three plays, we've seen him just do that. On assignment in the secondary, Hall gets loose for a touchdown. Sue makes the pick on Missouri's first offensive play following. And now the Huskers, in a couple of plays, have taken a 13 12 lead and will go for two. Okay, now interesting here, there's no play clock on the field right now because of problems, right? So they're out there. You do not want to have a delay of game. They're a little tardy getting the huddle to go on. Coming in motion and a penalty. Husker lineman on the right side there flinched. That's DJ Jones, the All backup tackle. On the offense, number 73, five yard penalty. Replay the try. You know, up by one, the book says you go for two. Do you still do that? Yep. Yep. But back from the eight yard line? Still go. Give you a little more room. What does the one do for you? A little more room to work with. Well, well in case you have a safety, seen a safety yeah. already today. <laughs> Did I open myself up there? Y'all just jump. But move. Love you guys. Lee looking left side fires in the end zone. 
And it was broken up. He was looking for Paul again. So still just a one point lead. Two touchdown receptions. Lee to Niles Paul sandwiched around big Mr. Sue's pick the first of Gabbert's career. I thought Paul's catch right here the ability to stay in there focus in between two guys Tremendous. outstanding play. Now Missouri gets the ball back down for the first time tonight. They have an ice cream laboratory here. Thank you. It focuses on sensory analysis, flavor chemistry, and food engineering. It's Tiger Stripe signature flavor here. You know, the Tigers and their faithful stun because Nebraska has taken a lead for the first time, 13-12. Now we want to see how Gabbert's going to respond. Jesse hadn't thrown a pick in his young college career. It was a bad one. It set up a go-ahead touchdown for Nebraska. How's he going to come back? You cannot be gun shy right now for Blaine Gabbert. The kick bobbled. Finally, they gained possession. Get out to the 30-yard line. Jarrell Jackson. Another minor Sunday NASCAR. Tony Stewart back in the hunt following the win in Kansas. Mark Martin, Jimmy Johnson. This thing heads to California, the Pepsi 500, Sunday, 2.30 Eastern Time. For more, log on to ESPN.com. All right, Missouri, two first downs in this half, one of those by a penalty. What are they going to do to make up something against this Nebraska defense? Well, they hand it to Washington in the first play after the interception, and he doesn't get anything. Talking earlier about these Missouri players that don't feel respected. There's an opportunity now playing against the dominant defense. Now you're down in the fourth quarter playing at home. Go earn some of that respect right now. It's a challenge for a first-year starting quarterback and a team that has a lot of new faces. They got to be a little bit shell shocked at the moment. And it's Washington all the way to the bottom of the formation. Gabbert fires. A flag comes down. Gomes was defending. Tried to get it to Alexander. Now won't check the marker. going to be against the Tigers. They're asking Bo Pelini what he wants to do. Accept it. And he says, yeah, we'll send him back. Yeah, absolutely. Personal foul. Hands to the face on the offense number 93. 15-yard penalty. Second down. Well, they said number 93. They got a confusion. I think it was against a Missouri lineman defending number 93, Sue. Yeah. Well, look, now they're saying it might be a to Nebraska. Uh, there was not. Nah, nah. Well, wow. oh, there's total confusion by the officials there. It's a Bo doesn't. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I thought I thought it was on them. But yeah. What are you asking me? So it was on 93. Mamakong Su apparently, and they, despite the incorrect indication, that's a huge difference. See Dumakong Su here working against the center. He gets kind of in the wash versus two players. Uh -huh. It just looks like he's kind of pushing guys off him. This is Washington fighting near midfield. That's a 30 yard difference. It gives Missouri a first out of the 45 instead of being pinned deep. And that wasn't much, huh? No, but that call still has got me. That's what, what I mean. That head? call wasn't much. No, not wasn't much for the call to be made. No, I didn't see it. He's still arguing it right now. I, I just, well, I tell you, sometimes your hands get inside and if they slide up off the pads and hit the helmet or face, that doesn't mean you're blowing to the head. Low snap. Gabbert fires. Intercepted. Intercepted on the sidelines. Gomes trying to navigate. Tackled by an offensive lineman inside the 10. And Gabbert, who went four games without a pick, all of a sudden they're coming in bunches here in the fourth quarter. And you know what, Jesse, Chris, and I are sitting here and we're, we've asked you about a quarterback. Okay, it's in his head a little bit. The out ball is a pick six waiting to happen here. What's up? If you don't throw it on time, it sure is. And there, Blaine Gabbert late getting to the throw to compound the problem. He throws this behind his wide receiver and low, and that allows Gomes to pick that up. We've seen a lot of receivers drop balls here tonight, guys, but what about Gomes' ability plucking that thing on the ground? Missouri's defense will have to try to stiffen as Gabbard 
bit shaken over there. Back to back interceptions. Consecutive throws. Hello, first and goal. Picks his way for a couple. Now, that Fowler is the Nebraska formation we've seen many years. Two tights, single back. I'm coming after you. I'm in your face. It's what they built their identity upon historically. Right now, they have not always played poised so far in this game. They cannot afford penalties, push themselves back. They need points. So this is not a one possession game. Got a couple of tight ends in the game. Lee firing for the end zone, looking for Paul again, and a jump ball that time. A touchdown maker, well defended by Simmons and Kevin Rutland. It looked like Zach Lee was getting a little bit greedy there. He wanted it all. He's been feeling it. He's thrown two touchdown passes. He had a guy wide open underneath him. Yeah, but you know, I was getting greedy in my thoughts too. They go for six, get six. But then when you stop and look back and you think about it, hold on a second here, a field goal is big in this game. Makes it a four point game. And what makes us think of Missouri, they show nothing, no reason for us to think that they're going to go down the field and score on Nebraska. Freshman Burkhead, tailback in the eye formation. Paul comes in motion. Lee rolls, looks back to his left, flips it to a wide open man for a touchdown, Mike McNeil. The tight end got lost in traffic. And three touchdown passes by Lee in the fourth quarter. All within 322. That was really on the quarterback, Zach Lee. Mike McNeil really struggled getting out of the wash to fight away across the field here. Zach Lee just had to buy time, buy time, and allow his guy a chance. What a great call by Sean Watson. Nice call. It sure was. So Nebraska. Twice converting Gabbert interceptions into touchdowns. It's an eight point game, still just one possession with 10.34 to play. But you got one team with a quarterback with a little confidence. You got another one wearing black jerseys. They're looking for their guy. You see Mike McNeil, that touchdown is sweet for the guy who grew up in the St. Louis area. As lightning quick a turnaround in a football game as you will ever see. This is a great call here by offensive coordinator Sean Watson. He's going to try to get his tight end across the line of scrimmage, but he's actually getting held there. So the play takes a little longer than exactly would have liked. He's being held because they know that that tight end delay, he was holding me. Man, <laughs> he was holding me big time. I didn't think he'd let go. <laughs> but that's what that defensive lineman's supposed to do. He knows he cannot let him cross back inside on the tight end special tight end delay. Y'all used to call it something else, but it's basically a delay. Yeah, it was an oh no screen. It was actually a different word. It was an oh <laughs> blank screen. <laughs> a couple of short touchdown drives, 18 yards and 10 yards for Nebraska following the interceptions. This is Jasper Simmons. Had a little crease, but it closed up quickly. And Mizzou will start at the 25 yard line. Regional action Saturday 3:30 Eastern Time. Herschel won in the Big Ten. Badgers trying for some respect. They go on Terrell Pryor in Ohio State. That's a big one. And then you get Baylor, Oklahoma, Oregon, UCLA, and Connecticut, Pittsburgh. John Clay from Wisconsin leading the Big Ten in rushing right now at 116 yards a game. That Ohio State defense, though, in the last three weeks, they've given up 38 rushing yards per contest. They're Watch, stout. Watching Wisconsin last week play, it looks like Brett Bielema's team's got their energy back. Remember they started out, had all those illnesses? Well, Scott Tolzien, too, a quarterback that very few expected to win the job, has been a very efficient passer. It's not just Clay running. They're throwing the ball pretty well, too. Yeah, he looked great against Michigan State, didn't he? Against Minnesota, came back, yeah, got that win. Absolutely. Graham Stoddard, the freshman on the field for Nebraska. All right, Craig. So here you are. You're in Missouri. You haven't had any success moving the football recently against Nebraska. What are you thinking? What are we doing? Well, I, you know for a fact that they're going to only rush four on you. Now you, I, he has to throw the ball. He has to stick with it. Remember that Gabbert led the nation coming into this game. Efficiency in the second half. Tonight, three of 11, two picks after halftime. He's not a complete he's, reversal of fortune. The young guy has to be stunned out there. Yeah, well, yeah. Stunned they keep it. 
in the Gippy ankle. He's able to get about five yards. He scored Missouri's only touchdown of the final play of that first half. And warmer on the field. But again, this guy, there's going to be times when a first year starting quarterback looks like it, and it's been one of those nights. Well, Gary Pinkle, the head coach, said he's the type of quarterback that gets really down on himself. He can't afford to do that right now. Everett fires far side. Short completion. Gets some confidence back. He was Jarrell Jackson, the sophomore. Very nice throw, and that just showed. We had dinner last night with Chase Daniel, the former great quarterback here, and Chase is good friends with him and said, hey, Galbert, he's a, he's a beast now. He wants to get after you. So he has to show that mental toughness right now in this game. Here's Washington cutting it back to the left, and it's a pretty good gain on first down. Chase Daniel said that about him. We asked those other players on Missouri about their quarterback and what they keep talking about, winning attitude, competitor. We has a chance to really prove those qualities to his team here right now. He said he was hyper in the spring ball, as you might expect, wanting so badly to fill in for Daniel to show there would be no drop off at the position. He's learned to calm down since then, but this is by far the most pressure he's faced in his young career. Buying time, buying time, and now a late scamper on the sidelines. They'll spot him near the first down marker at the 46. Remember, they did rally from 14 down in the second half against Bowling Green, but Bowling Green didn't have Mr. Sue. I, I don't like this. Now, it's a good change of pace, but you're seeing now Nebraska really playing soft on their rush, kind of just sitting back, right? They're not pinning their ears and going after him in the pocket. Gabbard able to tiptoe for a first down. Inside of nine minutes, eight point game. Oh, yeah. Hand it off to Devin Moore, and Missouri's starting to, to, to pop some gains now. Nebraska just sitting back, relaxing a bit on defense. I, I, that's, that's my, my, I'm seeing that, you, Jesse? A little bit. It's a little bit soft, a little hesitant sometimes. And Devin Moore, a guy who's only 5'9, 195, talked to Coach. Yo is the offensive coordinator. He said, you know, for a little guy, he, he runs like a big one. And then you see him right there. He gets north, really makes those tough yards. He's had a high ankle sprain, hasn't been in the last three ball games much. Gabbert thought about running quickly, then kind of hesitated, and Sue tracks him down, and here comes a flag on the tackle. But maybe a horse collar. Personal foul, horse collar tackle on a defense in the 93. 15 yards. It's the second First major down. penalty on Sue. Uh, it's bittersweet, really. I mean, he's made some big plays. He's also had some big penalties here. I mean, the athleticism's unbelievable. Just kind of pulling that jersey on the quarterback. It's one of the new points of emphasis in recent years. Nebraska over 100 yards in penalties now. This moves the ball to the 31. You, you hear Bo Pelini saying he's grabbing his jersey. He did not have the top of the shoulder pads coming back. Did he get the back of the jersey or was it the top collar of that jersey? Moore yep. trying to cut back. He gets cut down after about a three yard gain. Have a look at this. Is this is this a horse collar or is he just grabbing the jersey? He's strong enough to pull you down just from the jersey. Yeah, yeah, good point. Very good point. It looks like he goes high on the back and it, it, it's tough to see. But there at the very end of that, it was his right hand that had the jersey, right? Watch. He grabs him by the shoulder pad. That looks like he's got him behind the shoulder. Joel, it was jersey. Yeah. Jersey. Well, Sue won't like either penalty call against him here in the fourth quarter. On second down, Gabbard fires far sideline. Diving catch made. Jarrell Jackson a couple yards short of a first down. Good effort. Wayne Gabbard looking really good on this drive so far in rhythm, making throws. He's had to make a couple plays with his feet. Well, and, and, and his receiver just made a play with his feet. If he did indeed drag those feet in bounds. Missouri still trying to go up tempo here. Well, I wondered how Gabbard would respond after a couple of picks and now a whistle. Nebraska fans cheering because they believe this play will be reviewed. Further review. We'll check and see if Jackson got those feet in bounds. Well, they've gone back to the or well twice anyway. on this play. Throws it out in front nicely. He leaves way before he gets out of bounds. Just a matter of does he have Ooh. possession? Ooh. Did the elbow come down? Yeah. yeah. The feet weren't. Yeah. Good, good point. 
perfectly parallel to the ground right there. Point of the elbow. Yeah, oh, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. Left yeah. elbow in the in the green. It's a great yeah. catch. It's a tough call though because the forearm came down, and it was part of it on the, on the white, not a bounce. They ruled it a catch. It needs to be indisputable evidence to overturn this. But in the meantime, Gabbard has looked pretty good on this drive, helped by the running game. Some nice gains on first down. They have a little bit of balance, really. But we also mentioned that, guys, Nebraska defensively has been kind of taking their foot off the gas a little bit. No I think doubt. that's made a bit of a difference, too. I didn't like that. This crew has been busy tonight. Total of 18 penalties, 11 of them on the Cornhuskers. Another look. Keep an eye on the forearm of Jackson here. Yeah. Does he have possession? Yeah, the elbow comes down maybe on the green, and the forearm hits out of bounds. It looked like there, too, from that angle, maybe the football kind of touched the ground almost. Yeah. It's a great effort, though. Look at him stretching out for that. Been some tough, close calls for the review officials tonight. Notably, that touchdown at the end of the half. Right there, the looks ball. like the football touches the ground. After further review, rolling on the field is confirmed. Completed catch. Third down. I like when they say that the, the, the ruling is confirmed, and maybe there just wasn't enough evidence to overturn it. <laughs> yeah. They're just splitting hairs. It sets up a much more makeable third down, though. You need two yards. Right, well, well, while you're down here, I know what you guys are thinking uh, along with me. This is two down territory, right? You may not get back down here again. Keep the football in your possession. Buddy, you don't lose yardage on this play. And there's a whistle. And Nebraska timeout. will spend a timeout. First charge in the second half. And Lee didn't like something he saw right before the snap. And he's not afraid to use timeouts on defense like a lot of those head coaches with defensive backgrounds. <laughs> the offense doesn't have to use all the timeouts. We can have a couple. Crucial third and two play coming up for Missouri. Now trailing by eight points. The Huskers with 20 points in this fourth quarter on three touchdown passes from Lee. Devin Moore is the back in the game to the right of Gabbard. He's got it. Penetration and he's dropped for a loss. Alfonso Denard came in there and now after a risky running play Missouri faces a decision. It'll be fourth and about seven. You can see it on Gary Pinkle's face. Oh man. Worst but, possible situation. But you know what you said it Chris during the commercial break there. Bo Pelini not afraid to call timeout and save it. He's not conceding going for third and two. We're going to stop you. Said four down territory, but now Pinkle's offense needs six yards. Instead of trying to cut this to a five point game, they will go for it. Four defenders on three here at the bottom of the screen. Three defenders on two at the top. They bring pressure. And a misfire across the middle, and here come a couple of flags. There he is, Santi said, what did they do? He got there a bit early on the tight end, Andrew Jones. Well, the line judge threw a flag. He was standing about 40 yards away from that thing. Nebraska pleading that the pass was uncatchable. Pass interference on a defense number four. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. Oof. But that huge penalty right there, huh? Yeah. yeah, you know, the pressure coming now. There have been four almost calls. That is yeah, pass interference. Yeah, and very catchable. There have been four really close in the middle of the field that Nebraska has not had called against them. Finally, Missouri gets a call. Penalty number 12 on the Huskers is costly. Gabbard rolling. Just heaves the ball out of bounds. A lefty throw on the run. Wow. And there's another flag down. On the oh. offense, number 66, 10 yard penalty. First down. Austin Webbles held Jared Crick to find tackle. And he'll get back 10. Yeah, you know what? You're going to see him over the left side, left guard, hands up on that right shoulder pad. Ooh, that was, get his money's call. worth. Yeah. Easy yeah. call. Yeah. How about Blaine Gabbert right here, though, running out of bounds, just putting the football on his left hand and just saying, I'm getting what rid of this. A, what a big call. Penalty. What a humongous one. 20 penalties in the game. Yeah, now for 100 yards in Missouri penalty yardage. 
First and 20. Gabbard. Feels a little pressure. Still looking for somebody now, just has to throw it away. Pierre Allen got in his face. Okay. You see what Nebraska's defensive line's doing now? They're going, they're pushing the pocket. They're forcing Gabbard out of the pocket with a gimpy ankle. We talked about that earlier. That's the best thing to do. Don't let him sit back in the pocket and just step up. Force him on the perimeter where he has to make plays. The Missouri receivers right now are not doing a great job coming back for their quarterback when he's scrambling. Huskers rush four. This time Gabbard has plenty of time. Fires downfield into the end zone, and it'll be well over the end line. Alexander was the man he was looking for. Nebraska defensive line did it again. They had ends stunning inside to get pressure up the middle, forcing Blaine again outside. Yeah, but, but again, I'll take your role. The receivers <laughs> did nothing for it. <laughs> this is a well-conditioned defensive line, that's for certain tonight. Nebraska's D-line has played an outstanding football game. Gabbert on third and 20, fires over the middle. It was off the hands of Gomes who had the interception earlier. He was covering Perry. Gabbert's limp getting worse now as it's fourth and 20. You see that pressure on the left side over there, Chris? You know, that Nebraska defensive line, they're relentless. It's the same stunt we've seen now on the last two snaps. And, and again, Blaine Gabbert having issues stepping into the pocket. Trying to deliver these balls accurately downfield. So Pickle trying to get his offense to, to stay upbeat. Facing long odds here and long yardage on fourth down. Now it's okay to play soft. Keep it in front of you. Gabbard doesn't want to get sacked. Fires downfield. Even if you're not going to convert the fourth down, you don't want to get tackled at midfield. So four straight incompletions, the holding penalty, and the drive stalls with 524 to play. How about Nebraska's defense right there? Making a stand late. Now, they had had the football taken down the field on them, but they make a stand. Now look at the taunting coming up right here now. Blaine Gabbert gets knocked in the sidelines. A couple guys jarring at him. Referees all over that. You see coaches trying to get guys back. Yeah, you don't need Chris Brooks. It was a receiver just hanging out in the bench to get in his ear. That's a receiver for you, didn't Jesse? Though, though Chris, <laughs> they're like yard birds, man. Just chirp, 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 chirp. easy to chirp when you're on the sidelines like that. Brooks, another guy that his game means a lot to. He comes from St. Louis. Hello. Short gain at the middle as the Huskers try to chew on the clock. But right now, if you're in Nebraska offensively, and you're Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, you're running the football, getting this clock wound down. Zach Lee's now throwing three touchdown passes in the last three possessions, but just run the ball, Craig. Run the ball, but the offensive line's got to do the push up front, right? You, you know you're going to be bunched up there with Missouri. And if you're Missouri, watch out, though, that play action. Huh? We've already seen Sean Watson pull out one little tight end. Run the ball. I know, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Hello. And a stumbling. Able to eventually turn the corner and gain a couple of yards. It'll be third and short. You'd like Halu there, though, to stay, stay in bounds, bounds sure. wouldn't you? I mean, yeah. understand the situation in the game right now. Don't freeze the clock. Yeah, you want to get all the yards you can, but not at the expense of the clock still running. Now wind it now after the ball is positioned. Big third and two here for Missouri's D. You think? <laughs> I'm really good with the run. Hey, the this so crowd is stunned, are they not? Yeah, it's quiet. They thought they had this one in the bag. Big play for the Mizzou defense. Trying to get the football back. Hello. Hesitates. Fights now toward the marker. It'll be close. Luke Lambert rode him to the ground. Second effort may have gotten him the first down. Barely. Yes, it is wow. a first down for Nebraska. Tough running by Roy Halu Jr. on this. Looked like he was stoned in the back, but Craig, you talked about it earlier, that leg drive when he gets behind his pads. Absolutely, and the left guard that time, Keith Williams coming around. 
finding the linebacker. Yeah, it's been a frustrating night for the top running back. Has a crucial two yards and keeps the clock moving. Missouri still has the three timeouts. Burkhead spelling hello now, tailback. And three tight ends for the Huskers. Burkhead hammers forward. Big, crucial seven yard gain on first down. The old offensive lines at Nebraska were road graders. That's what they need to be right now in this final drive. Wow, Zach Wieger. Remember him? Oh, Zach yeah. Covered Zach back in the 90s. Zadiska, Wieger, those guys oh. part of the national championship offenses in the 90s. Oh, you sure. had those fullbacks too, Corey Schlesinger. What about Wieger? The Macavica brothers. <laughs> Great names. <laughs> And Nebraska inflicted so much pain on Missouri in that era. Mizzou has kind of owned this rivalry in recent years. Nebraska trying to turn the tables tonight. Burkhead stopped just short of the first down. It'll be third and one. Nebraska had a, a kind of a similar game against Virginia Tech on the road. They dominated the whole game. It was the Hokies who turned it around in stunning fashion. And, and Nebraska Fields stole the game tonight. Other side of the coin. And how big would a win be for Bo Pelini here on the road? It's been 17 games now in a row against ranked opponents on the road. Yep. They've lost. Huge, huge game for this program. Given what it means in the division race, again, the winner of this game is going on to win the Big 12 North each of the last three seasons. Let's see if they pull that left guard around up in the ISO on the right side again. Lee sneaks it for a first down. This will take the clock inside of two minutes. This Missouri defensive line really was having its way for the majority of the game with Nebraska's offense up front. But on this drive, Craig, they're bulldozing. How many times have we watched football games when a team has dominated and really had opportunities, not taking advantage of those opportunities? Well, Missouri to have any chance, Craig, they're going to have to make a play on first down. It, you, you, they can't even get in a position to use their timeouts because Nebraska's gaining big yards on first down. It's been a really interesting quarter. I can't remember the last time a game flip-flopped the way this one did in the fourth. Chris, it's hard to get penetration with a too tight slot and not be able to strip the ball behind the line of scrimmage. Nebraska gives it to Hellu. He breaks into the clear. Roy Hellu Jr. in a foot race down inside the five. Finally, the tailback breaking free. He says, forget about running out the clock. Let's build on this lead. Roy Hallou Jr. only had 42 yards coming up through that run. But Craig, look at the vision when he sees this hole and puts his foot in the ground. I, you know what I saw? I saw white jerseys manned up on black jerseys. Nobody coming clean. Short yard to score line kind of defense. And when you can break that initial line, hey, it's a foot race. Only had 42 all night, had 41 on that run. First and goal at the five. Blue tries to get the corner and stands up in the end zone. <laughs> Grabbing his shoulder, went down hard in the previous play, didn't want to come out, scores the touchdown that secures a huge Nebraska road win tonight. We hope his shoulder's okay. Ooh, give him a lot of credit for staying in the game right there. It's the, it's the toughest one out, but the speed beats everybody to the sideline. Last couple of runs now, Craig, gashers. No black jerseys around. We, we saw in the first half all those black jerseys running free in the backfield. What a fourth quarter for the Big Red. And the concern, obviously, for Halu, who, who I guess didn't, didn't cop to that injury from the previous play, stayed in there, carried the ball in that right arm around the corner. Well, that one have that shoulder looked at, but 27 points in the final quarter for the Huskers. It just exploded. There's been a lot of plays, you know, that, that kind of tied, turned the tide, and it was Damakong Sue's interception that really got this thing going. Yeah, that defense, Nebraska's defense, kept them in this football game despite all the mishaps of the special teams, the snaps, the botched punt returns, and they kept them in the game. It's an indication of a very well-coached team that believes in competing and playing the whole game. I mean, they gave you no reason to believe in the first three quarters this thing would even be a game. There's a 56-yard play that ignited this stagnant offense at barely 100 yards all night. <laughs> and 
it's going to be a nice trip back to Lincoln Nebraska as the Huskers grab the pole position in the race for the division title. Yep, absolutely. And you know what we did see tonight though to answer the question we had coming in Nebraska led the nation in scoring defense at seven a game. I think they answered that question. They are for real. Block shirts. Well, yeah, Pliny's going to make him earn that in practice, though, isn't he? We ask him if they have a big performance, you bring the black shirts back. Is that one consistent performance over time? But this was pretty good tonight. Simmons dropped at the 25 yard line. Let's take a look at the intelligent move brought to you by Mercedes Benz. Well, Zach Lee, early on in the first half, it was there was not a lot going on for him. And I guess the intelligent move came from the defense taking care of him. And the big shot down the middle of the field, Jesse, this was something we hadn't seen the entire game. There it was. And it just spiked his confidence. He came right back on the next possession of a touchdown, hung tough in the pocket to find his tight end for a third score. Numbers weren't great heading into the fourth <laughs> quarter, but you see his face, you see how he's feeling. And this ties, by the way, the largest fourth quarter comeback in Nebraska history from 12 points down in 66 against Colorado. This will be a deflating loss for Missouri. Chance to move up in the rankings. Chance to beat Nebraska here in Columbia for the fourth straight time. It all comes unravels in the final 15 minutes. And a, a, a tough schedule ahead for Mizzou at Oklahoma State, Bryant or not, and then Texas comes in here. But how about Bo Pelini talking about when he took over the job here at Nebraska, he wanted to create an environment of competing and a mental toughness week in and week out. And I'll tell you what, I think his team really proved that if, if they're not there yet, they're certainly moving in that direction. And, and, and certainly in the physical category. I mean, they played hard and they hit you tonight. And if uh, if this offense, I mean, it was raining hard, guys. And I mean, it's, for most of this game, it's raining pretty hard. There's a handoff. Washington. Catching Nebraska off guard with the long run out near midfield as we go inside of 30 seconds. Mizzou will spend a, a timeout. And how about Nebraska's quarterback, Zach Lee? Again, offensive coordinator Sean Watson wanted to see the maturation. Really struggled a few weeks ago at Virginia Tech in his first real test. Comes out here in this game, and boy, he looked good. Guy that was a baseball player in high school, very lightly recruited, kind of a, a late bloomer, didn't get any Division I offers with the Again, City College in San Francisco, and then connected with Nebraska. Came in the Callahan regime as the clock ticks down. So, what a rally for the Cornhuskers. Four touchdowns in the fourth quarter to erase a 12 point deficit. That big guy, Namakong Su, and that defensive line, stout up front. Got my vote as an outstanding football player. I'll tell you what, every team that has to play in Nebraska. Is going to have to deal with that defense, and they're going to have to deal with Dama Kung. That big guy said so another. much for the handshake, but I'm I'm, I'm out of here. He, <laughs> he sprinted off the field. No post game. Hot dogs, right. hot dogs in the locker room. You know they got food in there, don't you, Crow? They got food in there waiting for these guys. Gabbard, a game effort. He limped off, but the two interceptions looming large, setting up a pair of Husker touchdowns in the fourth quarter. The first two picks of his career. Tonight's Wrangler five-star player of the game. Was big Mr. Sue. Six tackles, had that critical interception in the fourth quarter. Also forced a fumble, a sack. How many times have y'all ever watched a defensive lineman that could have had two interceptions in one game? He almost did. Bellini's team rallies and Bowes with Aaron Andrews. Thanks, Chris. Coach, you just said your team showed a lot of character. What does this comeback win mean on the road to your program right now? It was a big win for us. Obviously, it's a big 12 North game, but I'm just proud of our team. Proud of the uh, the way they showed character, you know, things were going our way. And they just hung in there and hung in there and kept fighting. And uh, we got things turned around. We got a couple big turnovers and beat a good football team in some tough conditions. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of our team and on to the next one. I feel like the guys in the booth all night were calling Mr. Sue's name in the fourth quarter. We know the story about Gabbard, how he comes back. How was your defense able to slow him down in the second half? Well, you know, I, we just kept, we, you know, we played well up front. Our guys up front played their tails off. And, you know, in the secondary, too, we, uh, front to back, we did a good job. We executed our plan. Uh, we tackled well. And uh, just, I mean, Big Sue and uh, Crick and those guys up front, I can't say enough about them. And 
Um, just happy to come out of here with the win. So I'll ask the question before the Nebraska media does. Do they get their black shirts now? I don't know. We'll see. All right. All right. I think it, all right. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Congratulations, Bo. Yeah. <laughs> He's a tough grader, isn't he? But the man named Sue and company stout tonight. Taylor Potts and the Red Raiders next obstacle for that Nebraska defense. They get him in Lincoln. Yeah, you know what? Texas Tech will be a, an offensive aerial, but they faced the Missouri passing attack well tonight. And a furious rally in rainy conditions here in Columbia. 27-12, the Huskers win it. Sports Center's coming up next. Steve Levy and Scott Van Pelt. We're over on ESPN News with Post Game Extra. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports for Craig, Jesse, and Aaron, and our entire team in Columbia. I'm Chris Fowler. So long for now, Nebraska furious rally to win it by 15.